Capital Budget Committee. This is today, uh, gee, Thursday already, December 11th. Time for everybody to panic, but for the moment, if you would rise, or we can pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As you, all right. Santa's watching, so everybody calm down. It's too late to try to make up yeah, for last I know. time now. <laughs> been bad all year. You're not going to do it now. <laughs> Be nice, Michael. Are you? As like, usual, if we can go around the table and introduce ourselves, starting with our state representative. Hi, David Wood. Tommy Kravitz. Mike Hughes. <laughs> Jerry Zanoy. Brian Lapham. John Rice, secretary. I mean, Latimer Chairman. Mike Bluff. Stephen LeBranch. Jones. Richard Rainier. Jim O'Loughlin. Glenn Farrell. Jim Waddell. Thank you, Jim. All right, tonight is a little bit of everything. We still have um, revenues to go over. We've um, got some of the um, November financials to review, uh, the projected year end reserves. And we also have two items that we've already reviewed but we didn't finalize. But before that, um, we do have an issue that popped up, and uh, one of the trustees of the trust fund is here this evening, Norm Silberdick, and both he and Mark, uh, Attorney Gerald, if you would join us and explain the nature of your visit tonight. And I believe everyone got an email on this? Everyone did. Thank you. Well, Norm, we're gonna, could you run this down from the top? Because while well, we might have a little preview of what you're going to speak about, okay. um, people at home may not know anything about this. First of all, the, the uh, I'm sure the trustee of the trust funds for the town of Hampton. And in the, for the years 2011 through 14, the fees that were paid to Mackinson and Company, who are our investment advisors, were um, represented 0.1% of the balance of the fund, total funds for the prior year that were being paid in the current year. And the procedures that we followed, everything was charged to the real estate trust fund, not to any of the other trust funds. And subsequently we found out that this was an error and that we should have allocated our fees to the common trust. There are two types of trust funds, common trust funds and capital reserve trust funds. The common trust funds include the poor trust funds, the library, the cemetery, etc. And the capital reserve funds include capital reserves from the high school, <coughs> SAU 21, SAU 90, and the town of Hampton and the village of Beach District. And in trying to, um, to correct the error, we found out that the these charges should have been allocated to each of the various <coughs> funds but there was no provision for the capital reserve funds you cannot charge them you can charge the common trust fund, but you can't charge the capital reserve funds unless you have the approval of the various uh, boards to put that in their budget <coughs> and a bill was passed this past summer um, House Bill 297, which basically allows for the capital reserve funds investment advisor fees to be deducted from the income from the investment income from each of the capital reserve funds. That bill, although approved, has to be approved by the voters of the town of Hampton, which will be in 2015. So we were in error and we overcharged 
the various capital reserve funds, $4,062 for the years 2011 through 14. When I say we, actually Mackinson and Company charged the real estate trust funds for the capital reserve funds. This is mostly a technical issue. Once defined, once we understood this, Mackinson and Company reimbursed the real estate trust fund for $4,062, so the issue is is completed. So, and they will not go back to the various boards and ask the reimbursement. It's $4,062 reimbursed to the real estate trust fund, which will ultimately go to the town of Hampton. Let me just be clear right there, Norm. So you're saying that Mackinson took a loss on that 4000 They took a loss of 4000 no. Rather than go back into each of the various funds and ask for reimbursement. Excuse they felt it was easier, less cumbersome to do that, and clears up the matter. It was a technical error. It was not some capricious act. Okay. okay I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no. That there is $1,985 of funds that were charged to real estate trust funds that should have been charged to the various other common trust funds with the poor trusts and the library, etc., cemetery. And those have been done through a bookkeeping entry for $1,985, which basically reduces the fees charged to the real estate trust fund and increases the fees to charge to these various other trusts. Thus, the issue has been resolved for 2011 through 2014. And the issue is, is now put to sleep. We have reviewed this with the um, charitable trust in Concord, and this is the cleanest, easiest way to deal with the whole issue. So. Going forward for 2015, there is a Warren article that basically asked the voters of Hampton, who, is, who are the governing body who controls the uh, activities of the trust fund, because we are elected by the trust fund trustees are elected by the voters of the town of Hampton, that would, uh, that would if this bill is approved, the Warren article is approved, will then allow us to charge the capital reserve funds for their share of the investment advisory services. And if that bill passes, great. If the bill does not pass, then we've asked that the budgets for the town of Hampton which covers its capital reserve funds be increased by $1,500. That SAU 90 increases its budget for investment advisory services $400. SAU 21 school district $1,000. And the village beach district increased their budget by $50. And that's the entire essence of why I'm here. <laughs> Uh, Over uh, $2,450. Yeah. Uh, how come the real estate trust doesn't pick up some of the fees? Well, because they'll, they'll pay their, they pay their fees uh, based on our contract with Mackinson for their share only, not oh, for okay. the, not picking oh, up the right. other, no, the other they fees. Yeah. Okay. okay, they were, they were absorbing the fees for everybody and they're no longer gonna be going to be doing that. I should also advise you, just to let you know, that the significance of this is really, we're talking like peanuts here as far as money. The real estate trust fund since 2009 has increased by $5 million. And it's come under a lot of, of uh, public comments at the selectmen's meetings, but we pay Mackinson Company 0.1% fee which turns out to be right now about $20,000 a year for all the work they do, which includes the accounting and reporting as well as their investment advisory services. You couldn't find that type of service anywhere from anybody else. The lowest other competitive bid we got was like 0.4%. That would have been four times the amount. Most, I, I have my money Banger. managed by Merrill Lynch. <laughs> That's 1%. Oh, so yeah. uh, <laughs> we're really getting a bargain here 
from somebody who works in the community who's done an extraordinary job for the uh, taxpayers of Hampton and for the, the Hampton. So this is really mostly dealing with it, solving a, a, a technical problem that was uh, something we caught and corrected. I'm happy to answer any so questions. We are in that murky water right now of between the rock and the hot place since it has not been voted in by the voters. Yeah, so we basically have to, we're asking that the budgets be increased because we don't know whether that bill will pass or not. Ultimately, if the bill passes, the Warren article passes, it'll save the taxpayers of Hampton about $600 because the school, which we are... Which we've been paying for. <laughs> we are paying 100% of their fees. We really should only be paying 40%. So, uh, because that's our share, so the rest of it would be paid by the other communities if it's in their budget. And of course, since we have raised taxes and pay the school and ourselves, we'll be paying the bill anyway. Yeah, no, yeah but still, we're stay, ultimately, we saved $600. Okay. So, it's a good deal. Can I ask a question? I actually, I think probably everybody has a question, okay. and I'll start on this side with David. Sonny? Uh -huh. How, how does the, the money, the bill get allocated between the different based town the schools? Well, it's it's based on the amount of assets we're managing. Yeah. Is it a percentage of the assets? Yes. The it, right now, the, going into 2015, we've executed a new contract that we haven't executed. We're waiting for uh, final approval from the uh, uh, charitable trust, but it's going to be 0.12 percent. We give Mackinson and Company an increase in a fee from 0.1 to 0.12, which as a result of not only their increased efforts and their great job they've done for us, but <coughs> we've now changed our approach. We're investing more directly in, in, into bonds rather than bond mutual funds, and that requires more uh, bookkeeping, et cetera. Okay. Michael. Yeah, I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. Um, First of all, if we put this money in the budgets, and if the budget passes, and if the voters approve the Warren article, we'll basically have twice as much money as we need to complete this task. And in the past, I've always been against doing that sort of thing, because if the Warren article passes and the budget passes, now you have, when that was probably, what, three or four thousand dollars times two. And where does that go? They can go any place they want to spend it. That's the way that boils down. So I suggest that we pick one or the other. Either we support the Warren article or we support changing the budget. And we cannot reflect this in the default because it wasn't there for 2014. So if the budget itself does not pass, okay, they would not get their money if they don't have a Warren article. On the flip side of that is if we don't put in the budget and the Warren article passes, they'll have their money, but if it fails, they won't have their money. So we're back to where we are now, okay? So my problem with the whole argument is it's almost like double dipping, being paid twice as much possibly to do the same task. And I'm definitely against doing both. Either we support changing the budget or we support the one article, one or the other, not both. Could we say in the warrant article yeah. that if the, if the budget passes that the warrant article is null and in we could do that, yep. Is that in the writing of the Warren article? No. So the Warren article just stipulates that, that, that if it passes, then uh, it won't be reviewed again for five years. So it, 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 to, it, to answer your question, Mike, mm -hmm. it, it's, <coughs> it's really double dipping because we have no, no other way of... Uh, we have to pay Mackinson and Company, and if the bill doesn't pass, how do you pay for the service that you're at, asking them to perform? I'm not debating that with you, and you know how I feel about that issue all by itself, but I won't go there. But when it comes to this particular point, it's one or the other, unless the Warren Article specifies, you know, if the budget passes and if the Warren Article passes, they only get the source from one issue. I've argued the same thing down at the precinct okay. meeting, meeting last year. You don't want to have a warrant and in the budget for the same item. You might recall me making a flip about that. I think some 
a, a, a conservative statement on the warrant article that indicates that if the budget that, you know passes that the that the warrant article is is void. Well, it's simple, it's simple, it's simple enough. Are we going around the table? Yeah, yeah they're going around, and that's it. So. Okay, that's it. What do you think of that, Norm? Do you want, do you want to respond to Mike's comment? Or? Well, I, I, I would like to uh, think the Warren article will pass because it benefits the town. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not optimistic about the budget passing. Well, we won't know well, that we until we get to it, though. I know, but I'm yeah. not. We don't personal. have a budget yet. No, we don't have the budget yet. Okay. And I would prefer, if you could, can you change the Warren article? Put it in there. It depends. You're good with that word. Depends. Yeah. Right, Mark? I, I, I want to yeah, just Please. piggyback on what Mike is is asking, and I and I guess um, Attorney Gerald, if you would answer this one, is it a matter of we can't legally change the Warren article, or we just would rather not change the Warren article? Well, uh, this is not this legislation that was just passed this year unlike some, does not say the warrant must be worded in quotes. So I would, I would suggest that if we are going to take an approach to fully apprise the voters of the impact of a positive vote, that we, we would say that if this warrant article passes, to allow the capital reserve funds to be charged individually for their particular charge, then X amount that's in the operating budget would not be spent. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. If you okay. Sonny, we're going to keep okay. going around this way. Thank you. Yeah, we, we can't hog this end of the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brian? I'm a little confused as to where the money, it came out of separate funds? Is that what we're getting reimbursed no. for? What, what happened was all the capital reserve fund uh, fees were taken out of the real estate trust fund. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where I was going because yeah. that's why I was going to why it's going, just going to the real estate trust. The Maxson and Company is reimbursing the real estate trust funds for everything in the last four years, mm -hmm. making it whole. Yeah. And therefore, and is not going back to the individual owners of the capital reserve funds to try to be paid. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're skipping about four steps. They're, right. they're not going to the to the selectmen and say, "Well, let's reimburse this for what should have come out of a, a, an expense," and not going to the two school districts or the village district, but going forward on a contingency basis. Um, if the warrant article fails, the warrant article to allow the capital reserve funds to be charged, then the expense would be have to come from an appropriation and the, that which well, is what would come from where from the real estate trust fund? no no, no from, from a town. budget appropriation okay and so the trustees are approaching not only you for the fifteen hundred dollar contingency mm -hmm. if the warrant article failed but they're approaching each of the school districts and the village beach district for their capital reserve funds as for an appropriation I don't even know if they have a budget with those other entities, but they do with you. I know you've just been mentioning funds, and I'm thinking, why doesn't the money go back to the funds from which you should have taken, which is saying it was all taken out of the real estate trust fund. Yeah, right. they didn't pay it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. The real estate trust fund has yeah. been reimbursed. The trust fund trust fund yeah. 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 Okay. The, the funds that they did have authority to um, charge, the uh, common trust funds, not the capital reserve funds, there is a bookkeeping entry, so they will be charged for the last four years. And who gave them the authority in the beginning to, did we do this for the time to make these, make the fee? The, the trustees the, are. The trustees have the right to pick an investment advisor and, and determine the fees. Okay. It's just a question. We didn't allocate them to the various funds. That explains the reply. Thank you. I'm going to pass, but I'll come back to me. Stephen? Um, 
I know that we talked about this, Noam. Yeah. So, do I have to have the warrant article on the warrant for the village district as well, asking our legislative body if they will allow this to take place no. for this new RS, uh, yeah, the RSA? Is, or no, house, no, house. you do not. All you need to do is put $50 in your budget. Yeah, that's the funny thing, you know, the way this legislation worked, you didn't go to each of the entities with a warrant article. That's what I'm wondering. It's, right. a, it's only to the town. It's, which oh, is just the town. Yeah, okay. that's the funny part. Okay. So the schools and all the rest of them get charged whether they like it or not. Well, you give us the authority <laughs> by, by choosing to have us manage your funds. Yes, and you know, I, th we talked about that as right. well. The village district at the, this moment has about $15,000. Right. And the discussion that you and I had was, do I need a professional manager to manage $15,000? I mean, $16 million is one thing. Right. 15000 yeah. it's like... I, can, I, can, I, I would think that's up for you and the village district well, if, to determine whether I you guess, need that or not. I can tell you this. I, I haven't been the treasurer forever, and I don't even know how you got the money in the first place. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> how, how it left the village district and ended up with you. I really don't, yeah. because quite frankly, as the treasurer, under the RSAs, I know what my duties are, and, yeah. uh, and it is to invest the money right. as well. So I can put it in a Vanguard mutual fund, and, you know, I don't, the, the stuff that, what did you do before Mackinson? What happened there? We had TD Bank. Okay, so you and, did have and somebody they, else. They and did, they did a job that was... Uh, not noteworthy. <laughs> I know that the, there were times when it didn't make much money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I don't know, you know, how much risk that you, you know, what, what type of risk you take, whether it's moderate or if you're taking any risk at all. But, um, but I, I am going to talk to the commissioners about this because we have some things coming up that where we might need that money to do some projects. Any? Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Somebody trying to sell me stock. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the, the point is, though, that I want to find out. I'm going to, I sent an email out. Once I had this, I, right. I, I forwarded it to the uh, commissioners, and I also forwarded it to Bill Youngklaus, our, our accountant, because I want to find out basically how to get that money back under under the the, uh, the treasurer. And I believe all you have to do is ask for it and we'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Well, thank you very much. You've answered all my questions. That's, that's thank you. Right. Because I think that, I, th I think that, see, I don't need an investment company to, for me to invest. I have Vanguard myself with all right. my own money, okay? Mutual funds and various levels of risk and stuff like that. And I actually get free investment advice right. from them. So. Um, but in any case, you've answered my question. Right. I'm just going to ask for the money. I'll send you a. I'll you, send you, are, you are. You are. You are. Uh, you have control of your own funds. We are. It's been deposited with us. We invest it, and we invest it prudently, and have it available for you at a moment's notice. So. Okay. I guess I'll finish with this. I'm going to look at what your the end of the year is, and compare it to what we started with. Right. And then maybe say oh. for fifty dollars. I'm just going to leave it there. Because right, look how much I would say your your investment is up. Okay, I, I don't have. So. I, didn't, I didn't come here prepared to answer your no, specific no, question, no, but no. it's up. It's, it should be because I, you know the market. Everything is here. up. I, exactly. Exactly. But now that okay. you've solved the precincts business, <laughs> yeah. how are I'm you sorry. in on this <laughs> for the town? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, it seems like you could ask for permission to do this, but not actually. Uh, do the warrant article so that it's going to be in effect for the next five years and the money's just going to come out of the budget rather than... No, it's going to come out of the income from oh, I'm the sorry. It'll come out of the in income. It, yeah. Okay. If the warrant article passes, the fees for paid to Mackinson, in your case, 50 bucks, will come out of the income earned by the village district's uh, investment income. And if, it, and if it doesn't pass, then... Then we have to ask you to pay the fee. Right. Which is... For the village district, it's not going to be that a problem. That can't come out of the budget. That will come out of my budget. No problem. I can did write that check. Did they make $50 last year? I believe they did. I do not, Brian, I do not have the exact figures. I would. I could have brought them, but I guarantee you that everybody, this is not a significant hardship to no. anybody. No, it isn't. It's a small right. amount. As you started it out before, it's small potatoes. Right. But as far as the procedure, 
um, yeah. you know, putting it in both places. It's such a small amount of money. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to put an extra $50 right. in the village district. I have lines where I can just uh, find okay, Well, $50. we're just advising you to have a, a line item available for um, an appropriation because yeah, I'm I mean, advised by council that right. each and, of and, the various the town entities is, You know, town is, I'm not, I'm not in charge of the town. I'm not the treasurer yeah. of the town. So I know for my, my thing, I know already where I, I'm going to take the money if I have okay. to. Um, the town, it's not a lot of money. But I know that every you know everything has to be accounted for. So right. um, it, if it doesn't pass, they're going to pay it. Yeah. Mm. So I guess I know where Mike's coming from, but Tim, are you good? I'm good. Tim, I'm confused. Mm. Okay, well, join a couple of us. <laughs> First of all, writing the uh, Warren article. Uh, that says something to the effect of if the one article passes, then the budget item doesn't count, right? That's right. Would not be expended. <coughs> Would be expended. Right. Which is another way of saying, if you pass this one article, then you don't have to worry about the budget line item. But if you don't pass this, too bad. We're going to spend it anyway. Uh, nope. No. Oh. If it says will not fifteen hundred will not be expended if the sworn article passes, DRA in setting the tax rate will see that language. And I doubt that they would uh, allow the taxes to be raised to cover that much. But it will be in the budget as a as a validated line item. It would, but the Warren article I'm suggesting for the capital reserve funds would say fifteen hundred dollars that is in the budget would not be expended. So it wouldn't be raised for taxes. So then if it wouldn't be expended if the voters said no, and it wouldn't be expended if the voters said yes, because it'd be expended under the Warren article then why do we have it in the budget at all? If they, if they defeat if they turn the authority to take it defeat from the Warren the, article. In, yeah, if they defeat the capital reserve fund Warren article. expenditure warrant article, then you would at least have the ability to pay for the service through the budget. Right, that's, that's what the voters are being said. If you defeat this Warren article, well, too bad, we're going we're gonna to make the expenditure anyway. <laughs> Well, you, nothing comes for free, it seems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, this one comes for free because no matter how the voters vote, the expenditure is going to occur. No, if they vote no to both of them, nothing will happen. No. Oh, to both the budget and the warrant article. Amen. It has to happen. You've got to pay the fees. You're still going to pay the fees. You're still going to pay the fees. They have to suck it up from the default budget. It'll come from somewhere. It's either going to come out of the town's pocket or it's going to come out of the trustees. Well, the trustees rear ends. They can't the trustees. The All right, hasn't let's keep eight, going eight, down this side. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not done I know, that. but let's just keep the flow going and not the okay. crossfire. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I'm reading uh, HB whatever here online. 297. 297. <laughs> 297, yes. <laughs> it seems to affect a number of RSAs, 32, 31, 35, 34, 202. One of those has to it's do all over the place. One of those has to do with cities, and the other has to do with towns. Yeah, well, there were actually like five of them. I'm reading 36, uh, 34 colon 16, Roman numeral 2, and it actually says the governing body may authorize the trustees of the trust fund to charge any expenses occurred, et cetera. I, I read that too, and unfortunately, that's the one that has to do with cities. That's cities, okay. right. <laughs> right? So go one, one, one paragraph down. And that's the legislative <laughs> body. So that would be under RSA 35, yeah. legislative body. nine dash A Roman numeral two. Got it? Were we right? I, I hope so. <laughs> okay. It says what? The, the, the town meeting may adopt an article authorizing the trustees of the trust fund. That's that was disgusting. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that suggests that, I mean, it doesn't use the word only, but it suggests to me that the intent of this law is that the town legislature, that is, say, the town meeting, uh, they're the ones that hold the authority to authorize this expenditure right. and only them. And, and that, therefore, that's the warrant article, the proposed right. warrant so, article. And I'm okay with that. Yep. That makes total sense. The problem is inserting it into the budget. We're inserting it into the budget 
under what authority? There's no uh, a legislative authority for us to put it in there if this is saying that the town meeting has to authorize it. Well, that, that's the authorization to charge the individual funds right. as opposed to funding the trustees' expense for fund management. Right. And they don't, have, they don't have the authority to do that until they get town meeting approval. Well, first they, they have a budget line just like everybody else. Yeah. And they're, they're essentially asking for $1,500 more on their budget line to cover the management expense for those funds if the Warren article doesn't pass. This is where I'm confused, is that the, the law is saying that in order for the trustees of the trust fund to expend money for this purpose, the town meeting has to approve it. In order to authorize the, the withdrawal from an individual fund yes. for that purpose. That's the difference. Okay, so it's the source of the disbursement that's really the, that's the point yeah, of confusion. Yeah. It's, it's, it's neutral with regard to the cost. It's either going to come out of the trust fund or it's going to come out of the town. If it doesn't come out of the trust fund, the town gets more money. If it, if it, uh, Got it. So it's really a question of the source of the disbursement that's right. causing the confusion here. Right. right. And what you're saying is it really, does it really matter what the source is? And from my point of view, it does because it's about process, and I am about process. Well, it, it so. matters in, in the sense of where do the funds come from. The, the, the $1,500 that's being asked of you to put in the budget would be raised by taxation mm -hmm. if it's needed. Right. If right. it's not needed, Got it's it. not raised through taxation. So the, so the actual Warren article, to put it in plain English, would be if you pass this Warren article, we'll take the money out of the trust fund revenue. And if you don't pass it, we're going to take it out of the town budget. Well, th there will be, right. if, if there's that amount in the budget. Right, right, assuming they pass the budget. Right. Okay, so I'm clear on that, I hope. Okay, now, just to get a little bit of history to clear up my fog on this. Uh, Mackinson is the one, Mackinson, right? <coughs> Got the name right? Yes. He's, yeah. he, he was a trustee of the trust fund. And then there was some issue about uh, that, that conflict of interest some time ago, and so he resigned. Yeah. Okay. And when he resigned, he said, as I recall, that he wouldn't, he would continue providing the management service without a fee. No, he, he at the time he was a trustee, he was willing to do it without a fee, but it was not legal to do that. And you have to have an independent investment advisor. Mm -hmm. So he, res he did not run again for office and then applied to be investment advisor. And he was, of the number of people he interviewed, he was selected, his firm was selected. And it's not one guy, it's a firm. Mm -hmm. And they were the, by far the least expensive investment advisor that we had interviewed. Okay. So you've already, when you did this interviewing process, this, this number, this expense number was already part of that interview process, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. And this is the last question I have, hopefully is uh, why do we need this service when most of the time you're just basically buying mutual funds? We're not basically buying mutual funds. We are buying, uh, we are investing now directly in bonds in order to deal with the volatility of the marketplace. Uh -huh. So we've changed our, some of our strategy to buy the bond and hold to maturity. So no matter what happens with a bond mutual fund, because people can withdraw money and they get panicked, but they feel interest rates are going to rise and the market, in a, in a case of a rise in the value of uh, interest. Yeah, yeah I, I understand the, will the decrease. We, we, there's more being asked of Mackinson and Company to do for services as well as we're paying for a financial reporting service that would have cost us you know, at least fifteen dollars or $20,000, in my opinion, to go out and hire somebody to do the same work they do. So we're getting a bargain. And he's a member of the community, and he's uh, trying to, to reflect that in his charges to us. He's, their firm has done a great job for us. They have the most sophisticated reporting. Okay, I got it. Okay. Tell me, uh, is there a motion on the table right it's now? Not, we're not done okay. discussing Thank this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I've got most of my confusion cleared. Thank you. Thanks. It's a separate bookkeeping. Richard. Thanks. All right, now I'm going to attempt to clear up my confusion. <laughs> Where in our budget book are the fees that we pay to... Mackelson. They are, you don't see them, they are netted out of the income that is paid to the town. Well then when you, when we talk about a double dipping here, 
how do we, where does it show up in the budget that we are paying 0.1 percent of the balance? You, you, you don't you don't see that right now. Okay. Well, where is it? In, but but we right now, that uh, Mackinson and companies, in, the income that the town gets, six hundred and fifty thousand dollars right, right now, would be. It, that is after we pay Mackinson seventeen twenty thousand dollars, whatever the amount of money is. I, I, I'm just not here with the specifics, but it's seventeen eighteen thousand dollars. And this bill, for a portion of the amount of money that is Mackinson and Company is dealing with, for the capital reserve funds that includes for the town, right. it's fifteen hundred dollars that the real estate trust fund has been paying. That now will be charged with this the, with this Warren article will be charged against the income from the capital reserve fund income. This includes for the uh, road projects for uh, capital expenditures, etc. We're holding like a million plus dollars for the town, and that fee would be deducted from the income that we're earning on that on that uh, those reserve funds that hadn't been done before. If we cannot get this bill approved, the Warren article, Warren article, Warren article. Warren article. Yeah. then we have to get we have to pay Mackinson and Company anyway. So how are we going to pay them unless the it's included in the budget appropriation? It's either out of one hand or the other. It's still, it's it's a net the net amount of, for the town is zero. There's no change in the amount of money involved with the town. Just a matter of where it's coming from. That's right. It's either this hand or that hand. There's no there's no cost to the town in reality. Oh, you're saying in this 2015 warrant article, uh, things are going to change around, and that the town is going to be responsible <laughs> for fifteen hundred dollars, SAU ninety four forty, SAU twenty one for a thousand, and the village district for fifty. Right. That would be if the warrant article if, well, fails. If the warrant article, warrant article fails. fails. If it fails. Oh, if it fails. If it fails. Right. If it right. passes, you'll never see it. If, it, right. if the warrant article passes for this total amount of, uh, yeah. where does it come down? How much is it? That's uh, $24.50. $24.50. If the warrant article passes for $24.50, none of these entities will have to pay that fee. That's correct. If the warrant article fails, then each one of these entities will have to pick up the tab. Right. But on the other hand, there'll be more income generated in each of the capital reserve funds. So then when we look at the budgets for, say, for the SAU 90, should we see a line item in there of the potential of having to pay $400 for Yes, you should. Yes. That's exactly correct. You yes. Should. You should. That's right. This is yeah. going to be as new to them as it is well, to us Well, that's tonight. what I'm driving at, because yes. it's, it's all new to the village. It's all new to the to right. SAU 90. And, and the same way with the village. When we start reviewing the village right. uh, budget, They'll there should be something in that, a line item there somewhere that if we're going to get hit for 50 bucks yeah. from <laughs> Mackelson to right. administer our capital right. reserve fund for the Hampton Beach Village District. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Which we can handle. Yeah, I guess the question is, well, we'll have to go back. Is it worth 50 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> well, Why don't we just take it over ourselves? That's another well, that's matter. Right. That's for the VD to decide whether it's worth 50 right. bucks. Yeah. Right. All right. I'm all clear. Thank you. All right. I'm clear on the process. Thank you. I just had one question. Um, the current rate you said is 0.1 percent. Yes. And I think you said that that was going up to one to 0.12. Right. Is that to make up for the shortfall that he no. incurred, no, or that is that just going to be a an that increase. was just a negotiated increase to Mackinson and Company for the services they're doing. Okay. We have a we have a bargain rate. I, I it's a bargain rate. Right. No, I, under, I understand that. Yeah. My I, I just wanted to know if that was to make up a shortfall. So no, that that's no, no. a how often is that rate adjusted? We we haven't adjusted it in four years. Okay. So. Okay. And, and I know that uh, there was a presentation at the public comments about Mackinson and Company's fees having increased. 50% over the years. That has to do with the value of the portfolio having increased. The town is benefiting to the tune of over $5 million increase in the portfolio. We're getting 9% increase this year and paying this guy the firm, it's not a guy, again, I, I, I want to make that clear. 20000 bucks is, is lost in the noise. I mean, the, the trustees feel that we're getting a Terrific value for our for our. The better the town does, the more the fees is obviously. So yeah, we want we want him to get as much money as he can because 
we're all, we're the beneficiaries of it. So that point one two is not reflected in what's passed. No, no. Okay. Everything was point one, but we have a we have a new um, we have a new contract that we haven't executed yet, which we'll do in January for point one two. Okay. Thank you. The dollar amount is increased, but the fee percentage is not. That's no, the fee percentage is increased. It, well, it's going to go, but well, it'll, yes. right. when, when yeah. you say a, the, an increase from Mackelson, it's because we're getting more money. We're getting We've a lot more money. We've money. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we're talking okay. about point zero two. Yeah. Okay, Glenn. <clears throat> um, everybody, everybody was made whole. No question. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Obviously, you guys have done well. Obviously, Mackinson has done well. Yeah. What's the cleanest way to you think? I thought that the, what what Mackinson and company did by reimbursing the town. Mm -hmm. No, I mean the cleanest way with the, with the Warren article and just adding the the. Uh, what Mark, roar. Words yes. Mark said. Do you think that's the best way to go? That's the the easiest way to go. That's the simplest, okay. easiest way to go. Fine. I'm right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. you I defer it as we all went around. So the, uh, now my turn. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I understand that we paid it out of the trust fund. We paid it out of the money that we made. So you didn't have to raise any money to pay the fee. It came out of the money that income. the income that we made, yeah. and just reduced that income line by fifteen hundred dollars problem I have is if we fund the whole 15 450 dollars does not belong to the town budget 400 dollars belongs to the school budget and 50 dollars belongs to the precinct budget yeah. oh, actually, I, I actually not. I want to, I want to correct actually you not? No. no please correct me I want to make yeah. sure 1500 that is the town's portion Fifteen hundred is only the town's the town. portion. That's for the cap reserve. You are, you're only looking to us to for fund fifteen hundred. That fifteen. The memorandum I sent out to you and all the uh, financial officers of the various institutions was for them to budget for the SAU ninety four hundred dollars for SAU twenty one a thousand dollars, of which actually the town only pays four hundred, and the village beach district fifty fifty bucks. <laughs> That has nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with the budget committee and the town of Hampton. Except we deal with all those budgets. Yeah. Right. I know you'll see these, right. but yeah. I just want to we'll make you aware of it since you have you have the omnibus responsibility. When we, when we now, let me just go. I, I just want to get all the way through this. Right. Or the liability issue. Okay. Because right now, if everybody takes their share, we've really haven't changed the bottom line. Because we will have more in the coming year yeah, yeah. of income. <coughs> but say the schools don't do that. And the precinct decides it doesn't want to pay its $50. This is just principal talking here. All right. What happens to those two entities? I can't imagine that, uh, first of all, the, the, the voters of the town of Hampton mm -hmm. will... Uh, decide whether this Warren article passes or not, and if it passes, it affects SAU 90 and 21 in the Village Beach District. If any, if they decide uh, that they don't want to pass, they don't want to put this in their budget. It would be, it, it would be illogical to me, since it's. Where I mean, would I you? Can, I would the imagine. trustees be able then to find the money for next I year? Pardon? Would the trustees then be able <coughs> to find that four hundred and fifty dollar difference? Unless they're going to come out of their pocket. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, mean, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm throwing that all out there because I, I draw the I line. I can't imagine we, why they wouldn't why they wouldn't pass it. I just I understand the changing of the law norm. Yeah. And redistributing everybody's portion, and and I have no problem with that. I do have a problem with going forward with anything that would put us in the liability of hot seat because I heard this little thing that we wouldn't be able to put this out there for another five years should have failed. Did I get that right? Yes, that's right. So that's if this fails. Right. And, and let's say the school decides that they don't want, uh, they don't want to pay the fee, then, then uh, we'll invite them to take their money and go find another advisor. You know, that's all we have to do. We're not going to do the work for nothing. 
I just want to be clear on all of it. I would be comfortable, I think, with a Warren article that words it um, in a way that we're not collecting twice. We're not what? We would not be collecting twice. I, I would not have a problem here putting fifteen hundred dollars into this into the new budget for consideration, but not here and in the Warren article. I'd like to see some caveat in the Warren article that says it'll only be funded in one place or another. They've agreed to that. And that yeah, and that's my overall statement on that one. Yeah, no and, yes, you I don't think nice there's a problem then with that. Sonny had his hand up. Uh, uh, no, no. I'm not comfortable with the Warren article. I am comfortable putting it in the budget. Uh, I can tell you why I'm not comfortable with the Warren article if you want, but that's not of interest to me. You no, know, we spent 45 minutes yeah. on this. We're talking yeah. about noise here. This town's got about a million and a half surplus right now, and we're halfway through December. Come on. Fifteen, fourteen, yeah. hundred, a thousand bucks. Jerry, I think it, it just has to do more with the process. Well, no, I mean, the, the, put a footnote on a warrant article that indicates well, that the budget said. passes, a warrant article is void. That's it. You know, if we have no warrant article, we'll have even less time to talk about it. Yeah. So I mean, we've no been talking about it for 45 minutes, and you're talking in the noise. <laughs> Fifty bucks for the beach. How much okay. for the town? Jerry, Let him you. talk. He'd be finished Thank by now. Thank you for your noisy <laughs> contribution. Go, go ahead and say what you have to say, Jim. So I yeah. would suggest that you know, we find the proper place <laughs> yeah. in the budget uh, and put it in there and not have a warrant article. No. You have to have one. You have to have one. No, we don't have to have I'd a like, warrant article. You've okay. already said we don't have to. No, let's let's take a vote on it. I'd like to make a motion right. that we do the warrant article as Mark has it written up. Second. Mark's going to write it up. Second. I've got a question, Norm. Wait a minute. We've got a motion and a second. Discussion. He wants to. You want well, a discussion on the warrant article? Well, before this is on the. No, Sonny, well, we just we went around the table. We have a motion and a second. I understand that, but I have my we hand are, right. That's what we're going to discuss right now is the motion. Are you going to discuss the motion? Yeah, all right. I'll, we'll discuss the motion the way I didn't want to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> For four years, the real estate trust fund has been debited for the management fees, right? Yes. The capital reserve fund has been paying the management fees, That's right? Correct. That's He's correct. He's going to return the money to the... He did. So, yeah. Right. So that's credited back to the real estate trust fund. Real estate trust fund. Why not just debit the income from the capital reserve fund just right. to a bookkeeping transaction and charge the, the capital reserve fund up for the fees? That's what the Warren article is. That's what the Warren article is. That's why the bill was passed. To, to, you need to, you need the voters to approve, allow that. That's why the fee was returned because it was done that way, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. You need the Warren article and to allow that to happen. You can't do that otherwise. All right. I'll speak to the Warren article. All right. You speak, speak to, to the Warren, Warren article. article? Is, do I understand? Is that the Warren article? It, that we are suggesting through this motion that the trustees of the trust fund submit a Warren article, as as stated. Is that what the motion is? Yeah, well, yes. actually, the selectmen can propose the warrant. They're in charge of the warrant. Right. And so I, I think the selectmen will ultimately decide that the warrant article will be worded as we suggest. So I think what you were really meant was to fund the $1,500 yeah. Yeah. added to the budget, <coughs> knowing that the warrant article will be worded to eliminate the 1500 if yes. it passes. Yes. Is that what you mean, Jim? Yes. But that's right. not the motion. That was, that no, no, yes. no, yes. one minute. That's, that's, that's all I understood. One moment. That was not. All right. Just to I make a motion. <laughs> Thank you. To fund the $1,500 as, as necessary. Second. And if it passes, what happens if we put money in the budget? It's just, you're just doing it one that, way? That was his motion, to put it in the budget. Right. Where in the budget? The trustees have a, 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 a well, line item, don't they? You yes. want to want to identify where right. that page might what? be? Page page three, three. she says. Three. All right, Tim. Yes, I don't know what happened to the warrant out of the motion. I assume that that's been paid. Uh, he withdrew it. Discussing it. Superseded. We're discussing it. You withdrew oh, it, right, Tim? This is the warrant. I withdrew that. I mean, the the motion I have now is to. All right. 
the fifteen hundred dollars because the warrant article will go before the selectmen. Correct. All right. Hasn't been written yet. Hasn't been written. It's been written, but without the extra sense. The motion, so I speak to the right motion. The motion is to put it in the budget under All right. you know four what? one three zero. Is that it? If that's the appropriate place. Christy, is that, is that right, Christy? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Now we're clear on that. This is going to be a separate subline item under four one three zero, right? Yes. Called. Well, it'll, it'll, it'll increase. <laughs> it'll increase one <laughs> of the sublines. Fifteen hundred dollars. It addresses the town only fee. Okay, and we're not talking one articles at all. I think we're all happy with that. I certainly am. I'm ready to vote for yes on that. Well, does anybody else have any? Is that is that what we're not going to have a warrant article if we just no 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 that's us in selectmen, not us. The right. warrant article is totally okay. different. Uh, you know, this can is I have some water for a minute? Yep. Okay. This is something being thrown at us tonight in an unusual <coughs> way. No one's fault that we're trying to straighten out. Usually, we've had half a dozen conversations before we come in. So for anybody at home, I apologize, first of all, that we're taking an hour on something as, as trite as $1,500. It has more to do on the how, but the cross-conversation and getting out of order and deciding <coughs> you're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about without the sense of order is going to get us nowhere. Okay? So... We've gone back to Jim a couple of times. Obviously, it is still not clear. So, Jim, I'm going to go back to you one more time to make it clear because we have a motion on the floor yes. here. Yes, I will. And we would like to get home before yes. Friday. I make a motion to add the $1,500 for the fee, right, to the, the trustees, uh, trustees of the trust fund uh, expenses, which right. is on... Uh, four one three zero oh, five six sixty one hundred one hundred sixty one hundred yeah. sixty one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. That's my motion. There you go. And Third. the second. Third. Okay. <laughs> second. I'd Any like other make, discussion on that? I'd adding like to it amend, to the budget. I'd like to amend the motion. Oh, yeah. All right. What would you like to amend it to? That it's contingent no, on the Warnock. This, this is just. It, it can't be that way. Now I'll have to vote against it then well, because I, right. we can't do perfect. double dipping. Okay. I think what Jim's trying to do is take one piece at a time. Yeah, we right. need to find a way to pay for it. We're only going to pay our portion of it. It's going to be offset by the income, which means the bottom line is not going to cost the taxpayer anything. Am I so good so far over there in the financial right. corner? <laughs> All right. Actually, <laughs> actually, actually, might I just say I think his amendment is fine to make it contingent upon the selectmen's putting forth the warrant article as as represented. Okay. Do I well, have? No, I don't, I'm not comfortable with you know putting I mean? a, a contingency on a separate body. We're a body all by ourselves. We're going to make an emotion to create a subline item for this. Let us either do it or not do it and get on okay. with business. Right? Do I have a second yeah. for Michael's amendment? Not from here. I'll second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Wait, wait, what was the amendment again, please? Just Contingency on the Warnock being produced. Okay. By the Board of Selectmen. Well, whoever has to produce it. Does it can't the trustees produce the warrant article? No, it's the no. selectman. The selectman has to do it? Okay. All right. All those in favor? I'm good with that. On the amendment? Yeah. On the amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. Opposed? Sonny, how are you voting? I'll abstain this time. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> After all that noise, you're going to abstain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mike, no. And, and Sonny uh, is abstaining. Okay. All right. Now we're going to vote in the oh no it's not part of the vote okay. 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 on the motion, on the motion. Vote on the motion now itself. vote on the motion right. on Jim's motion yep. that was seconded mm -hmm. all right all those the amendment passed yes um, yes the amendment passed I don't have to <laughs> okay vote we didn't ask for the vote yet yeah, no, I'm just explaining vote. why I'm opposed. all those in favor <laughs> passes the motion with the garbage amendment on it no <laughs> all those opposed And abstain. I know. It sucks. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're finished with that. Already? We are done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good work, Mr. Silverdeck. Yeah.
Give him a raise. We have a Warren article to deal with. Oh, we haven't seen more now. We have a nice sized manure fork that works pretty good. Right. I can imagine what happens when, I, when we're talking $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you, don't you miss the budget committee? I would ask you that when it comes time for Warren articles, um, that you um, have someone come in and. Other than you? We invite you and back again, but have somebody come in to support that Warren article uh, and, and explain it, it all over. Okay, because it's not written yet. And at the deliberative session, or both? Or both. We both. have a set. We have two sessions yeah. in the beginning of the year. I'm not sure which one you are in. I'll send you the calendar. Please. And if you would be so kind me, uh, to follow the Warren article in during that notice. session. Well, it's true. Madam Chair, do you expect them to be here for SAU 90 as well? Well, I think a lot of, a lot of what we did tonight was done in good faith, based yes. on that Warren article. Mm -hmm. yes. So I would ask that when that Warren article comes in, in its, fi in its final form, that you, you come in with it to okay, go over great. this again. All right. Thank Let you. Let me wish you all a happy Merry holiday Christmas. season. Merry Thank you. Thank you, you too. very much. Keep right. making money. Okay, Richard. Gentlemen, since it's 20 past eight, should we take a break without a while? No, it didn't. Five of eight. I thought I saw a little piece of paper. I'm sorry. I'm looking up. I'm looking at the shadow there. You got a glare on the forehead. Sorry. We'll be taking a break right now. We're going to get into revenues. Chris, do you want to join us? Okay. Uh, what I do with my revenue sheet? Yeah. Revenues, revenues. How are we doing now? Uh, <laughs> Valerium. They cast it up. She passed I have nothing on it. Yeah, I don't either. She wasn't here. Yeah. That's why I was wondering That's if right. it was a handout, maybe. Yeah. If you have to, if a couple of you can double up, if somebody's missing the no revenue sheet. Oh, thank who you. doesn't have a copy? Part of my suggestions next year will be that the revenue sheets be in you the have a revenue place. sheet? Hmm? You have revenue sheets? They hand them out <laughs> separate, they get lost. You can look at these. You want a motion, Madam Chair? No. I think we can do that civilly as a suggestion. No, I meant no, that's a person. <laughs> well, yeah. Jim will be doing Are they different? No, they're all the same. It's all one package. You want a motion, right? No, 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 no. We, they're all one package. Jim, they want a motion on revenue. It's page one, oh. two, oh, oh. okay. Where's the number? What are you going to make a motion on? There you go. You can look at those. Okay, I, I move. Six million we can check eight hundred sixty seven thousand one hundred ninety six dollars. Second. Let's vote. <laughs> oh, let's <laughs> we have some discussion. Well, I see we only have four pages here, so yeah. 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 estimated it revenue. To what you. can we do to what? we yeah. estimate it? Yeah. yeah, we estimated it. Our revenues. We there were some increases. Um, there was an increase in parking lot revenues. Uh, some of the state numbers um, that we had received, but now we're hearing differences on those. Um, so. Increase we increase motor vehicles by a hundred thousand. And there's a total of almost five hundred thousand increase. Yeah, I, I don't have the number. The the revenue sheets that you gave out. Uh, 
On uh, D4, at the very bottom, the budget change from 14 to 15 is $447,371. Yep. Yep, got it. You have that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You have what? 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 Repeat that. Um, on D4, yeah. at the very bottom, it says budget change from 14 to 15 of 440, $447,371. And that was basically the change from the 40-some cents tax rate down to the 20-some tax rate? That's this is a 15, 15 budget. I'm talking about the revenues for 15 here. Okay, so we're projecting to have almost half a million dollars more in revenues mm -hmm. for 2015. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm off a of page. Right? Yep. Budget change 14 to 15, 447,000. What yep. it try to... Estimated. It's, that's what I said. Yeah. Estimated, yep. Does the, does the estimated revenues form part of the calculation for the tax rate? Not till next year. But that's when it's actual, though, no longer estimated, right? No, it's still estimated because they set the yeah. tax rate in October. Right. Okay. So we have to estimate to the end of the year. To the end of the year, but not from, not from yeah, January. Yeah, we've got everything October. up till the time we set the rate. Right. And she recalculates, files the MS report right. so just this, before the rate's done. So this number is not going to be part of the tax rate, but the one that's recalculated later that's on when we have more correct. actuals. Right. Okay. For next year, our our yes, only okay. concern are the state funds. Right. Okay. The governor's okay. comment the other day, they have an $80 million deficit. She's going to ask the legislature not to appropriate for some of the state funds. Mm -hmm. so, so even though those could, numbers are in there. That affect us by several hundred thousand dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me go to a line because even if some of us understand it, I'm sure there are many who don't. Um, on the line... Right on page one, payment in lieu of taxes. Payments made in lieu of property tax payments um, slash next era settlement. Yeah. For 2015, 240000 240000 yeah. Give us the next, you know, just give us an overview of that. We one. signed an agreement with next era to pay a set amount of money for the next five years. Yes, five years of two hundred and forty thousand dollars per year in taxes on the tunnels. So that's called an in lieu of tax payment. There's a special line for it in the MS report, and that has to be declared. We don't put in res or we don't put in uh, property taxes simply because if we did, there'd be no budget. The tax rate would be zero. Right. That's not right. revenue. That's a penalty or interest, right? It's it's an agreement. Yeah. So it's, it's outside the real estate tax fund. So that has to be put in because it would not be calculated in the real estate tax base. Okay. Anybody out? Go ahead. Fred, has that figure been agreed upon now? Yes. And we are going to be receiving that in 2015. That's correct. What if it went the other way? What if we were charging them property tax? I know we... You'd see nothing in this report at all. Because they well, don't pay property tax? Well, no, the bottom line is that the taxes are not reported here because if they are reported here, this, this the sum of the revenues would exceed the amount we're going to appropriate right. with, with the revenues and the taxes reported in this report, mm -hmm. and therefore the, the, the amount to be raised by taxes would be zero. The tax rate would be zero. Oh. In fact, the tax rate would be a refund because it would yeah. be over. I see. So you would have no cash. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so it's not reported here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. How many years does that extend again? Five years. Five years. So this will be the first of those five years. That yes. We'll see that. So we can count on that for four more after this. We can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then what happens after that? We're back to um, regular taxation or a new agreement. But there is that opportunity at the end run of that five years to do that. Yeah. Um, I think this is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, we've done that in, in Hampton. Seabrook has been doing it for like 20 years. Mm. No. So uh, it, it, it can be a long-term duration. It can be a short-term duration. I have a question, but on that same point, if you don't Yeah, if anybody has a question um, on this, Mike, and then um, Tim. There's talk to give that bill passed in Concord yeah. to back and have the uh, utilities back off mm -hmm. from the depreciation and so on and so forth. 
Yes. The, the power plants and right. power plants and stuff and other entities too. Mm -hmm. If that passes, say next year by some fluke, which I know it never will, but if it does pass, how does that affect our agreement with next year? It doesn't. Legislation cannot be retrospective. Okay. So the agreement was signed before the legislation was passed. The agreement will stay in effect. So there's no reason right in the next five years for him to get all excited about in Congress, basically, because we can't gain no, it anyway. But it's going to take a few years to get it passed, I think. Uh, we, we, we need to, to work towards work that goal. Oh, and we're hoping that certainly by the time the five years is up, it would be nice to pass this year, in the 2015 session. Yeah. But if it does not, we're going to keep on going after it each year to try to get rid of it so that by the time 2015 comes, it'll be taxed 100% on everything. So it's only five years from now and from when to when again? What are the years again? Uh, it starts in 15, goes to 20. Goes to 20, okay. Thank you, Rick. We are talking about estimated revenues. Right. So the word payment seems to be uh, like misplaced. No, we identify what it is. That's that's an actual set figure. Right. Uh, well, that it sounds like an expense. Oh, it's well, coming into us. No. Mm -hmm. Coming into mm -hmm. us. That's a revenue to us. Okay. We will receive a check from them. It will be placed in the general revenue account as opposed to being placed in the real estate tax account. Mm -hmm. Which is accounted for in the audit, not not here. How does that? So that is revenue, and there is going to be a zero taxation on that property because we're getting this. No, that's correct. They won't get a property tax bill. They will get a bill for this from revenue, us. right? And the finance department will bill them. I I, I don't. Wait, my mic. We just okay. Let's have water here. It's not an expense, as you see it. It's an expense to them, not to us. Yeah. Uh, when, when we calculate... I mean, the fact that we're giving up revenue in exchange for this payment, you don't see that as a um, We're probably getting uh, a fairly good deal because they didn't even want that. Uh, is it an expense? Obvious it? expense to them. Oh, yeah. Uh, they want to pay property tax and they didn't want this. So this is, a, this is a, a sort of in the middle of the range, uh, a deal uh, that will give us a little tax payment over that period of time. So we don't have to go through the property tax. Uh, we don't have to deal with the state. We don't have to deal with with them anymore. They just send us a check. We, we issue them a bill. They send us a check. Yeah. But it's less than what we were previously or wanted them to pay in taxes. So that's uh, why yeah. I'm saying it, it seems like an expense to me. Wow. You know, the duck is quacking kind of thing. Actually, the duck is dead. But <laughs> <laughs> I suppose well, the quack is echoing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, that's a long tunnel. <laughs> this. Uh, this this I, this is an expense to them and income to us and that's the way we have to treat it under the accounting system. I understand system. the categorization. It's just a little, you know. It's uh, not what we would like. We would obviously like to assess their their tunnels at 100 percent of the ad valorem tax, mm -hmm. and the state has foreclosed that option under a provision of the statute, which mm -hmm. Mr. Pierce brought up that we're attempting to have repealed. Mm -hmm. Basically, what this does is it forces the taxpayers of the town of Hampton to subsidize what they must do under federal law. Yeah, I, I understand, yeah. but so. it's, it's the legal implications of whether it's an expense or not. I'm sure you're aware of that. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm concerned about how we're characterizing it's, it. it to us, since you're not characterizing it as an expense, well, we don't have to worry about the legal implications of that. That's true. And it so is, that's was the nature of my question. It's treated under the state statute as revenue. Thank you, Fred. Any other questions yeah, I, on page I, one? Yeah, I, I want to talk about that a little bit myself. What were, we, what were we taxing them, Fred? How much revenue were we getting from them to begin oh. with? I'll have to ask counsel because he is the one who uh, uh, worked on this project directly and I wasn't involved. So but the argument here is is that they've had to lay in environmental protections which uh, they feel they've, they've been overly taxed on. Well, the argument is that they, they, they can get a, an abatement, basically, if you want okay. to call it that, a reduction. Right. Because they have environmental... They, they, some of their equipment is used for environmental purposes. Right. One of the tunnels is depreciated 100 percent. No taxes at all on that one. Mm -hmm. The other one, I think, is reduced by 57 percent. I think was the figure. I'm not sure. So, so, no. so we get the we get the bill them on the residual between 157 percent. So that we but we've been taxing the next amount each year. Right, and when yeah. the state ruled, that, that went away. Okay, but what was that tax, approximately? Well, we, we had assessed them at various amounts. Yeah. Uh, the last year involved was like $32 million and what of did, value. And what did we bring in from that? Um, 
I, I'd have to calculate. I'd have to get the tax rate to calculate yeah. that. I don't remember what the tax rate was for that last yeah. year. Seven no. Thirty two million dollars. So of, of, mm -hmm. of assessed value. Yeah. Uh, at what what was at stake? You see, they every year they filed an abatement petition mm. with the Board of Tax and Land Appeals. Right. Mm. So regardless of whatever it was, <coughs> we we taxed them for. It was subject to being reversed by the BTLA. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so they filed every year, they filed abatement petitions. And all those years, the BTLA being as backed up as it was, had all these years' worth of abatement petitions <laughs> in front of it. And, and we were very much at risk for approximately a million dollars worth of taxes. 1.5 million, actually, mm -hmm. worth yeah. of taxes yeah. that we had already collected. Right. Yes. And also set aside. And so part of this uh, uh, settlement <coughs> yeah. was, had to do with what had already been uh, charged. Right. And a certain amount of, of that 1.5 million was abated and paid back. And that was about 600,000. From us to them. From us. Okay. Of the 1.5 right. uh, right. million. From, from probably an overlay account or something. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, okay. exactly. And okay. so going forward, we, we knew that every year they would be coming in with the same abatement petition. Okay. And so, as, as is the case with many towns, a settlement was made that covered future years so that we wouldn't be facing this fight every year. And they would be making, instead of taxes, they would be paying the payment in lieu of taxes. Ah. And so that shows up as a revenue. So, so are we going to be taxing them, sending them a bill this year or next year? No, no. We'll not. be sending them a bill, but not paying for taxes. That's what in lieu of means, Jerry. Yeah. It'll be generated from finance department. The bill. A bill right, for right. payment in lieu of taxes. Gotcha. That's that's what will happen. They are making to us. Yes. Right. And that no, saves. We're paying the same tax for the next seven years. Five, 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 five years. years. Five years. Yeah, and it's it's not as much as they were. It's not the same amount as they would have been if we had continued to assess them. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. But it's, 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 uh, we were subject to having an abatement of what we had been assessing mm -hmm. every single year. Mm -hmm. So we lost that piece of the pie and we picked up this piece of the pie, right? <laughs> For a while, anyway. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. But that's <coughs> correct. Did we calculate that roughly, Christy, at all? What was, what it's we gone. Were no, the revenue we were getting from them on a yearly basis. Well, it depends, it, it depends on what the assessed value is. 32 million figure. It, it doesn't calculate into this report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It calculates into what's done in the, in the annual town audit mm -hmm. for the amount of taxes collected. So it wouldn't be reported here. Yeah, the estimated revenues do not include taxes. Correct. So that's right. why it wouldn't mm -hmm. be here for no, I understand. I just want to get to the Have we filled this one enough? I hope so. Yeah, no, just one I'm question mark. Well. How many years did it go back? Uh, uh, they, they had about, mm. they had four years, I think, years of, years of, of taxes zero. that had been filed. They had filed abatements for with the Board of Tax and, and the town abuse. doesn't have a right like a person does million, in the speedy mm. trial mm. or... Right. No, that the speedy <laughs> trial applies in criminal, criminal. cases. No, I, I was making a joke. <laughs> but no, I mean, attempting speedy decision I, 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 want to, I want to tell you procrastination. that it's, it's an important thing because uh, I'm facing this with a number of other companies who are some of our largest taxpayers, yep. have several years pending of the same abatements. Really? And, and it, because the abatement process is long enough before it even gets to the BTLA because of their backlog. That's state, I assume. We get more and more years. They just thing. won't do anything? Give them a couple uh, more judges? or Well, actually, the, the <laughs> legislature and its wisdom cut down on the number they Great. have. Wonderful. That's, that's a Thank problem you. for them. <laughs> so uh, I have, for instance, for other taxpayers, three different years' worth of tax cases at the same time. It would be uh, half a million tax. Thank you. It's frustrating. Yes. I can and, and they can actually so file in either at the Board of Tax and Land Appeals or the court. Mm -hmm. okay. And it, it, they don't have to be consistent. Right. Right. So I have some that have some of their years are with the BTLA yeah. and some are with the court. <laughs> so And they run on a separate track, too. So it gets a little confusing. But I, I thank you for asking. It points out a problem. Yep. 
Uh, and remember, we have I to think budget I for our, something you had other cases. We have to budget for our contingencies in, in depending on what may happen. If there is a court case that decides that there is pay payment due to the town, is there an interest rate that's attached to that? Yes. Six percent. Six percent, thank you. That's correct. That's at either the Board of Tax and Land Appeals or the court. Okay. Okay. Just going to in this case, um, there's just a couple of negative numbers here that I want to just go over. Um, permits and fees. And that's on dance halls, pool tables, et cetera, et cetera. Page one. Page one. Um, I'm still on one, D1. Oh, sorry. All right, I'm mid page, licenses, permits, and fees. Standing numbers 5710. I see that runs through. These are all estimates. Um, but is there any, what I guess I'm looking for. Is that with these things with negative negative numbers? Is there anything that has changed, or perhaps needs to change? I would think with the things being built and the activity going on in town, that that number could should be increasing rather than decreasing. You're talking about permits and fees. Other licenses and, yeah, and permits. Yeah, basically dance I base yeah. Okay. In 13, we only took in 900 dollars, so. I just bumped that number down a little bit. Yeah, no, I, because I, from the 1,200, because if we only took 900 last year, the number itself so. isn't yeah. isn't bothering me. Yeah. I I think I'm looking at it and saying, is everybody coming in for what they should have? Are we missing? We anybody? I know the finance department does bill for the permits and fees. That's like the dance halls and stuff, and we bill for those based on the assembly permits that come in from the fire department because right. they note on there whether the establishment has a dance hall or um, pool tables. So I think I don't. We could be missing somebody, but I don't know that we are. You know. I mean, I would, I, I just feel like we should be building on those entities, not decreasing and. I guess I'm speaking more to the inspection side of things that maybe is reflected in this number, like we, who's we, watching. We track from year to year. All right. Everybody that has a permit, because they have to get a permit from the selectman too for all these functions. And that's charged as well. So that fee goes in here as well. So we, 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 we track them from year to year. And if someone doesn't come in for a permit, they had one in, in 14 and they don't show up in 15 for a permit, we call them. Or we send an inspector down to check to see whether or not they're continuing mm -hmm. to do that function. If they are, we tell them to kind of come get the permit or shut down. Mm -hmm. um, Christina wants to be able to right? Yeah, like some no places change, change yeah. that, that don't have dancing. Going anymore. down a little further down onto motor vehicle fees. Madam Chairman, the there's a point on that one, if you don't mind. Okay, absolutely. You've got 1,200, though, listed as the estimate. For 15, so I, I, I can't see the mental adjustment of making 15 a thousand. Back Does, to your question. Yeah, I'm not going to argue about 200 because it's an estimate. Yeah, Mike, closer. I just want to see if there's something yeah. system, um, mm -hmm. systemic going on there that we're missing because we feel we're growing. I agree with that. That's and when I see a line shrinking. I understand, but they have the estimate. We're doing less dancing nowadays. Last year we, had, we estimated the cost was nine hundred dollars. Yeah. We collected twelve hundred. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there's no guarantee that will happen again. Some of them may be one time. Oh, so you think so the nine hundred to a thousand? Oh, okay, I got you. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's go to a little bigger number rather than complain about two hundred um, on the state MB transactions. Last year it was estimated at seventy-two. Already this year we've brought in sixty-two. By the financial report, and yet we're looking at fifty thousand and a decrease. When this was done, was there a reason something that had annualized changed? Annualized it out at that point. I'm sorry. When I created this, I annualized out whatever was in September. Or was I think I was then? using September numbers. Okay, yeah. so nothing then, has changed. No. Um, no. I mean, obviously, if you're saying that on the November financials it has a higher number, right. that's possible. So that yeah. we could possibly increase that. But when I annualized it out in, for when I was using the September numbers, that was more in line with what was annualized out at and that I'm time. And I'm not suggesting that because right. it's still just an estimate. The only point being is as we're looking again at these lines, if something has changed. Now, was la this year the first full year of the fishing game registration? No, right. I don't believe it was a full year. We have figures right. in there for 2013. Yeah. 
So I was assuming that it was the first. Well, 46. I mean, that was the beginning of so um, the trial period. Year, probably. So, mm -hmm. so this is the, I think this is the first full year mm -hmm. that we're going to actually have fishing games. So. Oh, that's down for the Is this, I, know, I mean, I'm going and I'm bouncing back for it to the, to the point that they need extra help or they want extra help for filing. Are we making enough on this to make it worthwhile to even be in this? We're not asking for any extra help. The town clerk said she doesn't need it. Uh, she'll handle it with the people that they have. They've all been trained. Uh, it takes just a couple of minutes to go ahead and make all the licenses. Um, well, no, she's not asking for extra help for this. Right. She was asking for extra help for filing. So it's mm -hmm. like if you're well, doing one thing. That's motor vehicle. Yeah. I mean, they take in two million seven in motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. And that's that's you know look, look at the cost of your motor vehicle light renewal. Right. And and and. You know, extrapolate that out to two million seven hundred thousand dollars to figure out how many vehicles they have to register during the course of the year and the amount of paperwork. Their paperwork per month is stacked like this, mm -hmm. and, and they have to file all of that because they have to go back and retrieve that when the state wants the information, or when it, when you as a citizen have a problem with your registration for some reason. Right. They've got to go back and pull that, so they've got to file all that information constantly, and they don't have the time. What I'm saying is that looking at that, and it's not a big money maker. Are we dedicating any person for doing that? You know how many hours that involves? No, every, everybody does it. Yeah, everybody does it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can do it at any of the windows. So whichever yeah. clerk you go to, they can do that. Okay. Anybody else mm -hmm. have any questions on page one? Okay. Richard. Down to uh, at the bottom of the page are the other licenses and permits. Is that the line, the line item that says miscellaneous license permits and fees? Is that the line item that would uh, uh, reflect the fees for video games and pinball machines? Well, that's and, in uh, the building department. This is other, other revenues, miscellaneous revenues conducted the by the town clerk. So I would guess that would be like marriage licenses maybe? Different things like that because that's not on the, its own uh, line. Yeah. This, uh, the, isn't there a, flat, uh, a fee for each video game? That is under the building department. It comes correct? under the building, right? Is it? Yes. As that's, revenue. that's an amusement license. Oh, All right. Okay. okay. And it comes it comes through the building department to the board of selectmen, and they approve it, and then the building department receives the fees and issues a license. So there's revenue coming in from the building department under their category that includes those fees. Yes, that's All right. Okay. Are we going to stay with page one, or are you ready to move on to it? I'm good to go to page two. Anybody any questions on page two? Yeah, on page two, the real estate trust income. It's, is that the, the trust income from the trustees of the trust fund? Yes. I thought the, it's less than the budget, 191, 178, instead of 6. I thought he said he was doing, he was doing well. That's not on page two that I know of. No, he's, he's looking at the uh, November. Uh, I'm looking at the November for no, You're in the wrong document. You have I'm to on the wrong. I don't have the other document. Well, that's what you had this year okay. for. I was sharing it. We've got, we got to talk revenue sheets. Sheets. So let's find that in there. All right, to pull this back in, we are on the revenue sheet on D2. D2. Yeah. Anyone else have questions on D2? Again, Richard. Okay. No Madam Chairman, through our state representative, <laughs> under the rooms and meals tax, isn't there something going on now to increase the amount of monies or out of proportion the monies coming back to the towns? Is there something? Can you fill us in a little bit on that? Or <laughs> I don't really have enough right now to fill you in on what's going on. I, I can. Uh, if you, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Senator Stiles filed a bill again. Right. Right. She filed this the third time she's filed it to increase the rooms and meals to the Good to come her. back to the towns a certain percentage. Um, the the it, chances of getting out of committee are probably zero to negative ten. Right. She's she's hoping though to get it uh, at least nice. into a study. If it doesn't go, there was an article in the paper today about it. Oh, there is. Right. Yeah. Okay. To get it into a study so that it will go forward from here. Because it, it, she's asking, I think, for 2% or something. I forget the percentage. Um, and, you know. <clears throat> you got 400 reps. 
it's a shot. Right. Representing all the cities and towns. And it's on a formula right now of the population. Right. Right. Yeah. right. It's based on it's population no now. Population. Yeah. What the senator is hoping is that if she can meet him halfway in between, she'll never. She knows she'll never get the what we truly deserve. So she's trying to meet him halfway. But um, more to come on that. I'll I'll keep you posted. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Kind of give you an idea. It's my understanding. Of course, they won't release these facts. But it's my understanding from some of the people who operate in town. There's at least one business in this town that spend, sends more to the state for these these taxes than we receive back. One business. Just one, one business. One business. Just one business. Yeah. To give you an idea of so how no. much we contribute. Oh, how out of whack it is, right? Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's it's. it's Jim said is correct. I mean, it's it's each one of you gets a certain amount of money for the whole town for the fourteen thousand. So you know, I was a selectman in the town way up north where we had four hundred people. We get the same per person as this town does. So it's is it out of whack? Yeah, it is yeah. because we're funding a large. There are fifty eight towns that fund a large majority of this whole mm -hmm. fund. Yeah. Nobody right. else wants to share. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to pull out a question on report copies, and it's kind of a, as we went through each department, each department has expenses that were elevated for copies and supplies, and yet I look at the income for um, report copies, incomes from departments. Are you talking about P the police PD. department or, F yeah. or fire department? Yeah, or no, PD. PD. Okay. All right. And... That has decreased. I annualize that out for my September numbers again. Okay, so we should be close, perhaps. <coughs> I mean, it could go up, but it was just an annualization at that time. Okay. <coughs> I don't know what, I don't have my, my November financials in front of me. I don't know if 10, the number in November has, huh? 10,320. 10, yeah. I won't go over yeah. each and every single line in those categories. I think across the board we've looked at it and discussed that perhaps. Some of the fees could be reviewed. I know the police fees were increased not too many years back. I don't know if you remember when, but it wasn't too many years back that the police yeah. increased well, all of theirs because they used to be 15 and now they charge 25 for right. a report copy. So the police department did increase their fees. I don't remember what year it was, but it wasn't too far back. Okay. And we're currently reviewing all the fire department fees. Okay, because oh, I think as you, you can see in your own expenses, oh, yeah. toner and paper has <laughs> gone through the roof. Oh, in, yeah. the pa in the past, I won't even say a couple of years, I'd say just in the eight, past 18 months. And at the police department, they do charge, they do the flat fee of 25 for one to five pages, and then each additional page they charge an additional amount. I can't remember if it's 50 cents or a dollar for each additional page. So if it is a large report, they are charged extra. Now that's just copying the report, not generating the report. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we, <coughs> the Supreme Court's ruled. You may receive a copy of any report that has been generated in the normal course of business by a department. If you want something that's not been generated, the Supreme Court said the town doesn't do that. We're not authorized to do it, and we can't do it for you. So okay. You could come and put it together yourself, but we can't do it for you. Any other questions on this page? Okay. I have one. <laughs> um. <laughs> For the uh, DPW 7210, we had 90,011 in 2013. You're predicting 103,900, yet we're only anticipating 80,000? Depends on how many pumper trucks yeah. come in to dump. Right. Mm. Okay. That's, that's the difference. Key. Okay. And we're not the only place they go. Right. Uh, there are towns that are lower than us, mm -hmm. and each of the each of the treatment plants restrict the amount of material that can come in because you, the system can only digest so much material at a time. Mm -hmm. um, in the winter time, we, we tend to accept more because it keeps the plant warm and it keeps the plant digesting and the bugs alive and happy and yeah. doing whatever they like yeah. to do. But uh, uh, in, in the summertime, different issue. And depending upon how long we have an open summer, if it's early in May, then we're probably going to have less waste coming in because there are other towns that have lower fees. So Thank you. we're about to review those fees again, which we do every year. When do you plan on doing that? Like the beginning of the year? Or? We do that in January for the previous year. 
and uh, then we report to the selectmen if there is a need to increase the cost. Can you also take it from the campers? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. And the state, uh, the state takes from uh, campers at the uh, beach. They have a they have a drop place. There. Yeah. yeah. State right park. next to their maintenance shed. Yeah. That's not the state park at the end by the right. by the river. I'm by the bridge. Mm -hmm. I just I want to go back to uh, the state of New Hampshire, uh, only because the other day uh, I was listening to the governor talk about the deficit amounts. Hmm. We have finally received back the uh, state aid for water pollution control grants, which is estimated at two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars for the, t the town this year. That's sewer improvements that were put in with the state shared SRF funding with us and they're supposed to contribute 20% of those multi-million dollar projects that were done by the town. Uh, there was an indication in one of her remarks the past two weeks ago that she may ask the legislature not to fund that again. Mm. So if that happens, happy. that $233,000 is going to go poof. Go they can take it back. <laughs> they, 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 they took it back for Seven or eight years. Yeah. Really? They refused to fund it. Right. I mean, literally took the money back out of out of, out of our hands. Uh, well, they no, they took it out of the budget. Oh, okay. This all all the revenues in the state, with the exception of the highway block grant, mm -hmm. uh, are based upon appro appropriation by the legislature on an annual basis. The highway block grant is based upon a constitutional provision. They get caught removing that one time, and the state the state supreme court said, no, no, you can't do that. So. <laughs> They have to give it to us every year, so all the rest are subject to appropriation. If she cries foul in the in the, in the session, she needs some money. So they, that can they take money them. back? Yeah. No, they, they can't take money back. Once it. it's given to us, it's given to it. us. We're not going to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's all we spent. Hey, Fred, when do you think that decision will be made? In, in fairness, at some point in time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? That's a good answer. While we are alive or not. Well, I, I, I don't think the, the, the effort of whether we, we are alive to share is important in this particular case, at least. <laughs> Certainly not to them. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. All right. So All of these funds come to the town late in the year. So mm -hmm. There's a good chance, like Fred said, saying they could pull that money back. They don't pay it to us January 1st. Uh, rooms and Meals comes in in December, right, Fred? December 31st, December 31st. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just, just, in fact, most of the revenues we get from the state come after July 1. Yes. Yeah. And there's a reason yeah. for that. Yeah. Because the state's holding all that money for the first half of the year, so and it shows it. No, it shows a surplus in their records. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like all of these. It looks really good when they close the fiscal year, but then they pay all the money out in that stuff. And the next year they're way behind. Yeah, that was right. that was the highlight this year at our at our workshop right. in Manchester yeah. on how much the state wanted to downshift again to yeah. us. Yeah. Right. So it's an overwhelming theme, unfortunately. All, All right. Retirement. Anything else on, on two? I mean, these again, these are estimates. If you have any questions about the nature of the fund itself, please in. Moving on to page three. <coughs> any questions? Yes, then I'm going to move on to page four. Great. All right, page four. Any questions on that last page? No? I have a summary, though, I wouldn't mind. You have a summary? Yeah. I looked at it a little differently. I looked to see who are the big players here in the revenue. Top five made up 80% of the revenue. Number one was the town clerk's office, all these permits and transactions. Number two was the state of New Hampshire. Number three was the trust fund and the agencies, the Norm Silverdick's contribution. Number four was uh, uh, 494000 from total town distribution, income from departments. And number five was uh, parking lot revenues. You see all of that, those five made up 80% of the revenue. So I looked, I stepped back and I said, well, how can we increase the revenue? What are some of my thoughts? And I just put them down. And there's probably a lot more. I think my number one thought would be we incur a spike in expenses in the summer for police and fire and ambulance 
and DPW. We are, if we put a good argument together, and I think we've, we've done that, I mean, there's the, I think we know how much we spend extra for police and fire and ambulance and so on. I don't know, we should try harder to get that money back from the state because that's there as a result of that beach and all the businesses associated with that beach. That spike of a million or a million and a half or whatever it is, is worth battling for. And I know we've, we've figured it out, how much it is over the years. Um, but we have to get into the state dread and argue on behalf of us before they make their budget that they submitted so that they can bake it into the budget that they submit to the state, is how I see it. That would be my first suggestion. Then I would say raise the fees for sewer, fire, DPW. That would include fire inspections. The guy spends a week or two or three or four, and we give him $75 and we say thank you. We need to, we need to do something. Actually, it's 40 40 <laughs> We need to do something about that, those fees. We are. Right. We need to recognize mm -hmm. the fire inspector especially uh, because of all the labor he goes through with the meetings and studying the plans well, and then inspecting said they're the doing, facility. They're redoing those. Right. And then maybe uh, large development, well, of course, that's large developer impact fees. And then uh, maybe, I just threw out sludge. I don't know, we take it in to uh, the DPW. Maybe we ought to raise the fees there significantly or whatever. We're covering our costs in sludge, yeah. and in the winter time, it helps us with the plan. If we don't have it, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, but well, we could, mm. is there any way we can raise the fees for that sludge? Well, what we, we do is we charge them the actual cost because we do want them to bring the material to us so right. the plant will run for it. Yeah. Put in $3,000. Those are today. my own. Those are my only thoughts on how we could increase revenue. <clears throat> and to add to that, Jerry, I think we really need to go back and revisit the impact fees. And I we, agree. We very cordially sat through and planning board and said we would not discuss it here because it wasn't fair. They have work to do on it. But I think that time and time and time again, if we don't want to take money from the taxpayers, we have developers that come into a town that's already loaded with a lot of stuff that we have paid for and are paying for. And those impact fees were already voted through. We don't need a Warren article. The schools get money every year from the monies that come through on those impact fees. And I don't mean to sound hard like where I'm going, but the work has been done. I understand it may cost a little bit of money to update what the planning board needs and some help for them to do it. And certainly, I know a lot of people willing to lend a hand. Um, but I really do think um, that our selectman's representative, Jim, if you could really hear me on this one, and Fred, if you can hear me on this one, and Mark, with your help on this one, I think it's an untapped resource that the vote is clearly voted for. It's been implemented with the schools. It had two parts. It had the municipal part and it had the school part. And the school part has worked well for them. And we have, how many years now? 10 years has this thing been here? In the last 10 years, believe me, we lost enough money to probably... Build a fire station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. exactly. And I don't take that lightly because we're not talking about petty cash here. It just takes dedicating and putting it on the agenda to actually get it done and put it in place. Um, it's not the cure-all for everything, but as we talk about a section in revenues and how can we bring more money in, what can we tap? Certainly there. I, I think the town gave the planning board the authority to implement the fees. Yes. As the planning board has said, they will never do it. That's correct. Part of the reason being is that there's at least one, maybe two realtors on the planning board. Uh, I don't want to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, Glenn, there's, there's reality, but Who then there's, there's what the voters voted vote for. for right. And I don't think, I, when I went in the voting booth for that, I didn't vote for schools only. I voted no, on more an article that was the completely. entirety. So I think that maybe we have to make a little bit more noise well, about that article, and the revenue the part of the budget article, is where I'm making it. It needs to come from boards like the, the budget committee <coughs> and the planning board <coughs> and, and, and discussing it calmly and coolly and collectively 
expressing <coughs> sentiment and other boards and committees the same way. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, the, the town meeting granted to the Board of Selectmen the authority to be sewer commissioners. And we worked very hard after that was granted. And we are now collecting fees for sewer entrances so that yes. each new person that comes into town is taking a portion of our sewer system permanently away from us right. so that that limits what we can do with it. And we're charging them for that. And, and I think that's a similar situation to the fees we're collecting for the school. So if that were done for fire, police, and public works, we'd be a little bit further ahead. We would. And I don't, I don't see anybody shaking their head on this committee about oh. no and being no, opposed to it. So I say this is probably, I'm putting that foot out there yeah. um, on my part on the budget committee in revenues saying I think we got to open that door up again Tim did you have something to say yeah I wanted to follow up on uh, Glenn's question in terms of impact fees right Glenn mm -hmm. uh, I believe the question was intended to Fred to ask whether or not impact fees can be established via a petition warrant article mm. impact fees no. The planning board are the only ones by statute under innovative zoning who have the authority to establish impact fees once that authority is granted by town meeting. The authority has been granted, and I think the statement is correct, and I've been told the same thing by various planning board members, that that will never, ever, ever happen for anything but the schools. So if there was a warrant article that removed the authority from the planning board, You'd also take the schools if you did that. And took the schools out, too. And then a warrant article that established an impact fee. That could work, right? But the impact fee can only be collected by the, by the, by the uh, planning, planning board, board, by statute. That's <clears throat> the problem. Yeah. It, it, it comes out of the innovative zoning statute, and, and the planning board is the one that has to have the authority to do that when they grant the permit for development or for approval. What, what if there were no planning board? Then who would collect that the impact fee? That would be the board fee? of selectmen. So the Board of Selectmen would then be responsible. So if we dissolve the planning board, we can... Oh, don't do that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a question of desirability. It's a question, it's a question it's of... Dissolve. It's not a question of whether it's desirable or not. It's a yeah, question I think of, like everything we else. Have a town, to we have a town legislature that's... We have a town legislature that's a town meeting. Forward. And that's what Glenn's asking is, you know, you know, the citizens in prior years, yeah. the town legislature, gave up the authority they once had. Okay. They could reassert that authority. They never but had they the statutory authority to establish fees except through the planning board. But they had the authority to create the planning board. That's correct. Right. And so we could roll all that back, assert whatever we need to assert, and then put it back in place. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good luck you with that. You have no, no idea how much I'm not stuff. suggesting it's desirable. <laughs> I'm only saying that we have a town legislature that does have the authority, just got a lot of hoops to jump through to get there. Probably not worth doing. Well, I can guarantee it's not worth doing. Well, perhaps it's, it's, it's we I'm not suggesting it at all. I just no, wanted I to point out that there is the authority there, but it's a lot of work you to know, get well, there. Well, you have other authorities, too, and that is to ask the town meeting to um, do a, uh, a request to the planning board and vote on that to, in fact, establish That's advisory, though. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. an advisory question, or whatever you want to do, and, and I think boards and committees and commissions listen closely to what town meeting does when they vote on an advisory petition. Madam Chair, if I may, I, I think we ought to write them a letter and suggest they do that. I'll make a motion. We write a letter to the planning board that we consider an impact fee for the town. I'll amend that motion to say that Mike Pierce should create a letter and submit it to the committee at a subsequent meeting for further consideration. All in favor of my amendment? <laughs> Second. No, it's... <laughs> You can't have an amendment without a second to his motion. Right. Good yeah, I mean, there's got to be some discrimination, right. too. You I'm guys sure. are in need of a break coming up. How about, <laughs> <laughs> how about if we vote this bottom line, yes. right. take yeah. a break, and come back with some fresh minds to finish up? Excellent today. idea. All right. You want the member again? Yeah, please. One more please. time. Thank you. Okay, hang on one second. Remember, it's an advisory vote. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's all, it's, it's, it's right all fictitious anyway. Six million. <laughs> I moved six million eight hundred and sixty seven thousand one hundred and ninety six dollars. I'll second that one. Thank you. So All those in favor of accepting it. Oh, unanimous? All right, ten minutes. Oh, was it unanimous? <laughs> Any no's? No's? Mm. 
Yes. Everybody vote yes. 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 Yes.
All right, thank you for joining us. Our break is over and we are back here again. Um, Christy, I think you're still in the spotlight with us on a couple of things. Everybody just got their financials last night for the closeout of um, November. 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 Yeah. Does anyone have any questions on those, or yeah. did you have time to? I didn't look at it. All right. So in fairness, but we're only eight, we're only eighty five percent spent. That's what that it, okay. November shows. You know. We yeah. only ha and Christy will be with us next week as well. So we have the schools next week. Yeah. If there's anything major that you see. Um, that you need a question to, just send the question off. We'll give it to Christy, and maybe she can put something in writing on that. Um, not to take time out of the next session. Okay with that, everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay so if we have questions, if you have questions on the November, okay, November closing financials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, send them along in an email. Mm -hmm. We'll have them answered, so we don't have any any time taken up on the floor. All okay. right. All right. And if there's still a question after that, we have Christy in our presence, and we can certainly ask her. All right. Uh, Jerry, is that the one that's dated December 10th? Yes. 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 The yeah. All right. The December 10th. So yeah. it's Thank always you. the month before that that the financials are for. Thank you. All right. I guess the big one moving on, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, but we are halfway through December at this point almost. Um, the big question I have in my mind in formulating the budget is where we might end up as far as surplus. And I know that the saying has been pretty close, but pr how what does pretty close mean in a $25 million budget? I'm going to say under 500000 at this moment. Under but I haven't posted any December yet because of the fact that I was working to get these done for you. I understand so that, that number could change drastically tomorrow when I'm, I started to post today, but I didn't process it all the way through. So we have a, a minimum of two weeks of posting to do. Out and of then to other reduce weeks. that 500000 yes. So we have 500000 left going into this month. At the end of November, it's looking like, if you project out, it's actually under 500000 Um like 475. Then you project out. Yes, when you project out what you think December is going to do. But put into that equation the fact that I've shut off the authority to issue purchase orders. Okay. Anybody who wants to issue a purchase Not order, today. it has to come to the finance department. It has to be reviewed. That particular line item has to be reviewed and what's outstanding in it and what any purchase orders are outstanding. And then Christy and I will have to get together and make a decision on whether or not the purchase <laughs> order is signed. Okay, because we had discussed a few things, I think, in the police budget, we made a list. We in the town that. clerk's oh, budget. Yeah. The only thing that maybe a little legwork has to be done on is we had copier frenzy going on, on copiers, new copiers. I think the town clerk was looking for a new copy for $6,000. Could, before you, we come to terms on that, either in next year's budget mm -hmm. or out of this year's budget, could we find a rate for a rental? It's a high use machine, and I actually think I've costed things out, and I actually think you may be better served in a rental agreement where you're paying for the machine, you've been in the rental and the repairs, and the toner. And I think in situations where there is a high use, you'll end up better off. We can ask as long as it's not a lease, which requires a warrant out. Right. No, not a lease. It's okay. a specific Straight rental. rental. Yeah. Straight rental. They own the machine. Right. They send you the toner. When light goes on, you call them. You get it the next day. You don't pay for any of that. You're just paying for the strictly yeah. straight up per copy. I know I have one that's uh, one point zero one two cents per black and white copy. And um, I work in an environment that probably produces as much in copies as, as the town clerk, and it's cost effective. So I'm just asking that, Fred, because we'll I think ask them to look at it and see see um, see what that cost comes out to be. Yeah. So that we can t versus the cost that they're spending now, obviously, and and see how that compares and whether or not that makes sense in the budget. Because if you're buying it, you're still buying the toner. So we're oh, paying yeah. for the machine, and we're paying for the toner, and that's going up, and I don't see any bargains there. And that may make a difference on whether it ends up in the budget or how it ends up in the budget, and I think it'll be much less than six, the $6,000 Her expenditure. machines, um, 
probably, in comparison to the ones, for instance, that are on the second floor, mm -hmm. is probably low volume compared to those. Mm -hmm. Those are very high volume. Uh, we've got them there simply because they're not really a straight copier. We actually have a press type copier. Right. Uh, to take care of the live volumes, which is very cheap <coughs> for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll take a look and see what the rental cost is on that and see whether or not that can save us some money. Okay. Thank you. I have another question about that while you're on if you don't mind. Andrew. Yeah, I don't mind. But we'll, how about if we just, I, I don't have any more to say on, you know, the projected revenues, but I would just like to start at one end of the table. Uh, at this time. Okay. Michael? Oh, yeah, back to the uh, printers. I know that some of them are connected into the network, so you can do that. Now, is that the way they are in the clerk's office, too? So they, are, they, are they networked? The, the clerk's office is not networked because she, the material that she uses and, and, and works with uh -huh. is, is dedicated from her to the state. Okay. Uh, so it's a separate, a separate operation. If it's connected to anything, it's safe to the state. Okay. But not into our system because we can't cross the two. And I know we have the big one up on the second floor outside your office. That one's, um, those, both of those copiers, one's a press and one's a copier, uh -huh. both of those are into the system. Okay. So anybody can, you can put them into the system and they copy direct from there. How about the rec departments now? Is that in the, connected to the system? Uh, n yes and no. Uh, it's connected to the rec office. Uh, it's because it's a color copier, high quality color copier, and they do a lot of their uh, PR work with that that needs to go out of house. Uh, we don't allow anybody just to, to, to crank up and get into it from their desk. They have to go in a request. And how about the planning and building departments? They all have copiers? Uh, the planning and building department share a copier. Okay. Is that network? Mm, no, I don't believe it is. Well, the reason why I ask is because if you have, say, five in the network, if one breaks down, you can easily switch over to somebody else. Well, we could else. network them very easily if we had to. That's not an issue. Yeah. They just haven't done it. And if we network them, we might see that the volume, we might be able to get by with four machines rather than five, for example. Yeah. Maybe. <coughs> mm -hmm. Back to the year end uh, uh, money, so a, a little less than 500 guessing right now, which we always know that's a guess. Do you have a list coming in from your departments of priorities mm -hmm. besides the ones that we looked at? We, okay. We've got your priorities, and we have some priorities from the departments, and we have some discussion that we've had with the selectmen on a few items so and you'll, uh, you'll, as we get towards the end of the month and we find out really where we stand yeah. uh, we'll give all those lists to the board and and the board will sit and decide whether or not we're going to spend and re remove some of those problems probably particularly related to things like warrant articles for next year or things of that nature if they're really small and we can take care of them so when do you anticipate what meeting will that be it won't be until the Pretty close to the end of the month. It'll be the, the 22nd, I believe, is our last meeting. 22nd? Okay. Yeah. But the books don't the close until the end of January. That's true. It takes us a month to close mm -hmm. them. I mean, the, the, the money cuts off, though, it didn't. Some, the appropriation yes. cuts off, but we can do encumbrances up, up to the close of the books. Okay. okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Gary? I think as we went along over the last three to four or five weeks, uh, new items that the guys wanted, the police, uh, the fire department, I, they were off trying to buy some apparatuses to save people that fell through the ice. There were a lot of things that they were, wanted to buy for the very first time or, or to replace. We, uh, we had talked about possibly buying in, you know, for, in advance of next year, thereby lowering the 15 budget. We all, the police wanted badges, the, the new badges, the plating is peeling and the uniforms and the hats or whatever. A reward certificate, you know, we thought maybe if we could buy that in advance, that might save the 2015 budget. And I don't remember all of the things we said over the last four or five weeks, but I, if, if Christy made a, a list a little bit as we went along, then she'd have it. That's my only comment on, on you know, spending money, but, you know, between now and the end of the, end of the month to, you know, to help mitigate 15's uh, budget proposal. Um, the other thing is, is that all of the, what about gas and oil? We, we never talked about gas and oil yet. Yeah. That's right. We haven't, you know, what about gas and diesel fumes and, not fumes, fuel. but diesel fuel, gas, oil, that, that. We, that. we buy, well, exceptional oil. We buy diesel and, and, and gasoline through a state contract. Yeah. Okay. And that floats up and down depending upon their contract. Yes. So, um. 
and while gasoline is on its way down, okay, it will be on its way down for a little while. We have no idea what's going to happen to it. I mean, it could be. But I mean, July it could be six dollars a gallon. The, uh, well, right now it's about a dollar off from where it was yeah. last year for right. it. So. So so is the state's cost to us? Can you give us a, a little? Well, there is no taxes involved. Right. right. So we're right now. You can buy a gallon of gas for. We're buying a gallon of gas probably 30, 40 cents under um, under what, what we were paying before yeah. on the open market. Now, I don't know what it is now with all the changes in well, that's, the can rates. Can we get a figure? I mean, something tangible. I thought Jamie had came in with a figure for you guys. Well, you've been asking, and that's been floating on what everybody thinks it is. Uh, I think Jamie gave us, what was it, 349 last year? I think he said it was still lower than year? what it was at the I pump. Thought, I Jamie thought. indicated that. 339? We're paying less than at the pump. Yeah. That's why I thought Jamie had confirmed. He hasn't given us a number mm. for now. He I, said he was going to look at the whole budget. I think what we All need is to use, if you could supply us with the number we paid for 2013, mm -hmm. okay? See what we paid last year, what the number was right. that we paid the state, yeah. okay? We know this year is fluctuating, but what the current contract is with the state and when the next renewal would be, when they're going to change, if you could give us that information okay. going forward. Because, I mean, right now, where we were last year to where we are right now, the cost to the public has floated at least a dollar, in some cases, a dollar twenty difference from where we were last year at this time. And I know we pay a different rate, yep. but I'm assuming that the same type of savings were seen without the tax. Right. So. I mean, clearly right now when, when they were talking about how they were filling the vehicles, they were saying that if it's cheaper to go to the pump rather than mm -hmm. what was negotiated with the state, they do that. We did that a couple of years ago, and all the right. gasoline counts now are almost running at or above budget because it's at the default still for 14. So I did do an analysis that I passed out in regards to that mm -hmm. where all the gasoline accounts were at that time. Right. I think it was in October. Yeah, in October numbers, and they were all um, either over or right at budget. So what I'm asking for now, as we're coming to the end of December, is a redo on that. Okay, because actually they haven't that, even right? stabilized yet. They're still yeah. decreasing. Yeah, we don't know where they're going to go. I know they're $1.90 down in uh, the southwestern United States. So. Mm, there are some places there. where there are hundreds. Yeah, we're not there. <laughs> we're not there. I'd like I mean, to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right, so if we could be... Um, furnish that information, it would make us very happy. Okay. And then if there's any, any, any as I, you and I were talking, if there's any information on insurances or retirements or anything like that, well, some of the things we talked about were all estimates, estimates at one time. Mm -hmm. In other words, if the bottom line pro budget proposal is going to drop at all, we should know it. Well, I, we, I, we, we have all of the numbers that we have in there for insurance, mm -hmm. for health, okay. Uh, for those things that we're talking about now, are in here. They're final. Yeah, yeah. We have a figure on those. That's in the budget. The one thing that hasn't been finalized in my mind um, is the money that is coming back from the trust. One hundred sixty-four thousand for twenty fifteen. Mm, we just handed out proceeds from a, uh, a refund from the trust for this year. You're right. This year. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. This year. Uh, no. we don't, there will be a refund in 2015, but we don't want it. We have no idea what it's going to be until until they close the books in July. We won't know. Oh. I thought we had two figures. What what was the amount? But what'll happen is year? we'll have that figure prior to setting the rate. It'll go into the revenues. Yes, because it's going to come out in February 15th. February 15th is when we're supposed to find out what's going. On. Then what was there was a deadline for February. If you wanted to have a holiday, um, what do they call it, an insurance holiday? Uh, yeah, if you wanted to take the refund and apply it to the, um, the money you're going to spend on insurance, you had to notify them by a certain date. Yeah. And what we've been doing is taking the refund and applying it to revenue base uh, to well, decrease our taxes. We've had some discussion about not doing that and using that money to reduce the budget a little bit. So Revenues can't be applied against the budget. Mm -hmm. Well, then the expenses, if you take that holiday and you use the insurance money, Fred, to It will lower the amount of the insurance 
okay? Mm -hmm. But you, you're, at that point in time, you're past the deliberative session and you can't change the sum. You're still going to raise it. We won't know until after deliberative session what those changes are going to be. So we can't change the sum in the budget at the deliberative session or anything else. Okay. So we take the refund so we can mitigate that. Okay. Because it goes in as a revenue, which offsets when we do the tax break. Right. I'll back out off that one for the moment. Yeah, it's, it gets confusing because they're delaying it into and past the deliberative mm -hmm. sessions right. for towns that have them in January and February, the beginning of February, which we always do, mm -hmm. because we have a March town meeting, but it may affect the other towns that have deliberative sessions in March and April. Mm -hmm. So... Because they have town meetings now in May for some towns. They have the delivery session in, in April. They can cut the budget at that point and account for those dollars. I don't have it in front of me. We'll be seeing each other again. Okay. So I'll formulate where my question is. I, I think the best we can tell you is we're told mid-February now is we're going to know what the figure is. Oh. Okay. We want the money, but we'll know what the figure right. is. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Now, I heard, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard, did I hear right when I heard that there was a million dollars going to be taken out of the undesignated fund balance to help mitigate the 2015 proposal? Budget we proposal. Talk, we talked just, about taking funds from the un, undesignated fund balance to balance the tax rate for 2014, mm -hmm. which has just been mm -hmm. issued. Right, right. And funds were taken from the uh, from that to, yes. to accomplish that. Uh, we haven't talked about 15. 15. That's not, so there's no million dollars been subtracted. No. And, and one, one of the things we look at very closely, for instance, we talked about what might be left at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, we try to balance that off with what we spent this year in yeah. 2014 from reserves yeah. to, to keep the tax rate stable. Yeah. We may need that same amount of money next year, so we, we want to at least put that money okay. into the reserve so if we can. There's no million dollars ready to plop in no on magic million dollars. Oh, 15 <laughs> budget no. proposal, which is somewhat high at this point. At, at the time, uh, we did the 14 budget. I think the, the observation was that we could deposit up to a million dollars to affect the rate. So what the board did is they allowed us to deposit in there enough to keep it flat. So what is the if if the O15 proposal that you put forth is accepted? What would be the tax rate? Can't tell you at the moment because we don't know what the assessed value of the town will be in 015. I thought that I. But what I can tell you is that if everything that was approved by the selectmen and sent to the budget committee in the budget, and if all the warrant articles as originally written and they're not all there anymore. Uh, were to pass, we would actually be appropriating less funds in 15 than we did in 14. And you did dead million dollars worth of warrant articles in 14. Yeah. Okay. We're looking at maybe two, two and a quarter. That's 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 the warrant articles on top of the budget. Fire station. Uh, they were not in the. Oh, they they were the year before. Yeah. Okay. But we're talking about the budget and the warrant articles in 14, yeah. okay, versus the budget and the warrant articles in 15. Yeah. And 15 is going to be much lower than 14 because they've cut most of the warrant articles out and certainly all the bond issues. I don't remember what all the warrant articles were. <laughs> well, they took $5.3 million out for... Uh, no, but I mean in 14. I don't remember. Actually, what uh, all actually, uh, there, weren't, there weren't not so much a lot of warrant articles, but there were a lot of items. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, a lot of money out of it. Right. Hmm. A lot. It was almost $10 million worth of money out of it. It was a big warrant. Yeah. Right. And a lot of them got approved. So, I mean, we're nowhere near that. Oh, I 15. remember the uh, culvert in the dam. Mm. Being a big money bar Okay. We're going to have that. plenty of discussion on warrant articles oh, yeah. coming up in January. <laughs> so, I'm going to pull us away from that so we can get to the last two sections tonight. I want to get clarification on Mark's got to come over here. What? Fred, the uh, million dollars that the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, took from the undesignated fund balance uh, will cause the need for 
one million dollars less in tax revenue regenerated, right? We don't regenerate the fund balance. We've increased the fund balance. It's not been decreased. For instance, when we we this selectman move a million dollars to uh, he said up to so called flat out the was tax it a rate. No, they did not move a million dollars. No. Okay. We had projected, if it was necessary, to be able to move up to a million dollars to apply the tax rate. We moved a fraction of that. So right. how much exactly did we uh, I just asked Krista that. I don't know if she knows off the top of her head how much we applied. How much? Was it a million? Okay. They did apply a million. Okay. So when they took the one million dollars from the undesignated fund balance, yeah. the effect of that would be to require the town to raise one million dollars less in tax revenue, correct? Yeah, it's an offset. Right. It has no effect on appropriations, only no. on the raising of taxes. That's correct. Okay, I just yeah. want to get that clear. That's correct. Okay, thank you. It does affect the, the rate. Not the, not the amount of money we're raising, but the rate, the tax rate. The amount of money we're raising affects the tax rate. The amount, the amount of, of money... appropriations is a different category entirely. Well, appropriations, less revenues, equals the amount to be raised. A million dollars is part of revenues, so therefore it decreased the amount to be raised by one million and therefore decreased the tax rate. Or stabilized it. Right, point. but it doesn't affect appropriations. It does not point. affect appropriations. Right. Appropriations stay wh wh how they are voted. I thought I heard someone suggesting that it did. And no, I no. I wanted to get that clear that it didn't. No, okay, it thank you. No. Thank you. Okay, we... Okay to move on, everyone? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. We had table two um, departments because we felt we needed a little bit more information so now I'm going to open up those two departments again first one being the legal budget so we want to move the uh, subtotal or the, the legal total I believe legal yeah. total total the legal yep so I move on page 25 one hundred eighty six thousand three hundred sixty four dollars. Second. Okay. Did you say thirty five or eighty five? Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Thank you. Now we've already discussed this right. and killed it. And we gave ourselves a little bit more room for a little further discussion. So I would like to go around. You've all had plenty of time. And one final round of questions and then a vote. All right, so I think we'll start over here again. Dave, if you, you're good with this section. I'm good. Sonny, any questions on this section? Welcome. You want us to come back to you? Well, in the legal litigation expenses, that's, that includes the, the Seabrook nuclear, uh, you know, does that include that settlement? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jim, you moved the total budget or what? Total budget, Total yes. budget. Total legal budget. Total legal budget. No, that was, uh, is that derived from a tax case? Page 25, uh, Jerry. As, as with all uh, resolutions of tax cases, that flows to the um, overlay or undesignated fund balance uh, reserved for that purpose. That's why they don't show up. Not on this budget. Okay. Not assessing, right? Uh, it, it sh it's uh, assessed to the undesignated. Designated. I'm sorry. Yes. Designated <laughs> fund balance. balance. Legal cost? Yes. The settlement cost. No, he was talking about a legal cost. I mean. Oh, legal cost? Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes, that's uh, actually outside council fees. Uh, that would be where that's assessed against because outside council handled that particular case. Oh, I was looking into the litigation expenses. All oh, right, I understand. Yeah. What is the undesignated settlement that show up? The settlement comes was paid out of the designated fund balance. Not undesignated. Thank you. Okay. Designated fund balance. That, let me let me try to explain. Every year we're audited 
and every year the auditors look at the cases that are outstanding and they assess the value of those cases if the town were to lose and they take a portion of the resources of the town and put them into a designated fund balance for that particular for each of the individual accounts that's the money that's used to pay for those settlements or for the case if we lose it and if there's any left over it the money goes back to the undesignated fund balance from the designated fund balance right let's come back to me madam chair chair I'm in favor of uh, restoring the wages of, of, of the unfortunate Wanda Robinson. I think that, uh, which would be about 60000 or thereabouts, and uh, 30000 or so in fringe benefits. I don't think he can manage this department by himself. I think he's down one person. I would highly, re and I've, I've been up close and personal with legal for three years when I was a selectman. I'd have to full, two full-time people in here. There's all kinds of tax abatement uh, issues going on. Uh, the court presence, does this, he's, he's involved with the planning, zoning boards in terms of development reviews, plus the, any municipal uh, prosecutions that might be going on, people uh, taking the town to court or whatever. I'm in favor of restoring. I'm not in favor of this budget as presented uh, for the town attorney's office. I'm in favor of adding 60000 to wages. And thirty thousand or thirty-five thousand to fringes. That's my position. I don't think this, this this department's going to be able to operate properly. I think it's going to be crippled, and you're going to see other labor costs beginning to rise when you go outside and you start paying two hundred dollars an hour for all outside lawyers and bargaining, collective bargaining. I, I just see it like a big a big collision and crash about to happen. Is that a motion here? Yeah, that's my. I'll make a motion if you want me to. I we hold motions until we get around the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll come back to you for a sure. motion when we're done. <clears throat> I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm all set. I'm all set, thank you. I'm waiting for the wisdom from Mr. Pierce. Did <laughs> <laughs> you draw straws to see who's oh, going last? Oh. We're going around the table. It's oh, your turn. Are you all yeah. set? All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go back to that outside council fees. Uh, sure. This budget was drafted up how many months ago? With the uh, well, proposal of this twenty-five thousand for outside council fees. Yeah, that figure uh, actually hasn't changed since the uh, bond is passing. Hasn't changed. Uh, the outside council fees is what I'm looking at. Right, the right. twenty-five thousand dollars figure. Yeah, which is quite a, like again that figure was projected a number of months ago. Yes, that's uh, actually experience. And not based. to bring up, you know, I I, I know there's a pr there's some <coughs> personnel action going on now with a town employee, that I understand from what I've read in the paper that does involve some outside counseling, for this whole situation. Is there going to be enough in that line item? For any future costs for that situation? Well, actually, what we've done is any. Uh, attorney labor matters uh, actually get lodged under uh, either uh, collective bargaining or other labor costs the uh, the outside council fees is non-labor oh, I see yeah all right non-labor so you're comfortable with the way it it is set up right now yes <coughs> particular section yes all right projecting what could happen in the future as best you can. As best you can. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. All set. All set. Fine. Jim. And Mark, you're comfortable with this budget? You're comfortable with the office as it sits right now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready now. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Waddell, for reinforcing what the selectmen want the lawyer to say. I appreciate that. Excuse 100%. me. Whoa. When? 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 Excuse me. And I'm oh, we're all set. Madam Chair. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, it's out of order. It's out of order. I agree. Don't do it again. Uh, yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir, I'll probably whatever do we collectively like say. It. Move on. Uh, order, order. I'm going. I'm going to take this opportunity at this table. To state once and only once. Okay, there will be no personal attacks, or for that matter, conversation that could be construed as negative towards 
other people on other boards or for that matter anybody period that's a warning for everybody for the rest of tonight Forevermore. Forevermore. Yeah, well, take it however you want it, but it's meant. Go ahead. Okay, back to my original uh, point, though, uh, back to this. Um, if you were to entertain having help right now, if it came to that, you wouldn't be able probably to hire anybody to fulfill what Wanda was doing at that wage, probably. Is that reasonable to say? Okay. Wanda had a dual role and two job titles. One was assistant town attorney and the other was uh, human resources coordinator. If you were to try to find an individual to fill both of those roles, I would suggest you, it'd be hard to find such an individual in the first place. And even if you did, the, the uh, cost would far exceed what even the increased salary that I had originally proposed would have entailed. And that more or less answers my question. So if we go down the avenue of re restoring the money, like Jerry suggested, Mr. Asnoy suggested, um, we probably wouldn't gain much from that, probably. We wouldn't be able to hire somebody for that price. So therefore... Not, not for those same two functions. Yeah, for those the same two functions. The function of the uh, <coughs> assistant town manager right. is, and he has the secondary title I believe of human resources director right. is, is intended to take up yeah. a lot of what the human resources coordinator was doing, Wanda was doing right. and more. Okay, so that, the question would have to be then would we be able to get somebody part time to help with the legal challenges? I, I think that's, that's correct and actually uh, Depend, it, a lot depends on the caseload, yeah. which I've analyzed, and yeah. to, to get to the point of answering uh, Selectman Waddell's question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's, you know, you have this $25,000 in outside non-labor council fees in there that I can use, mm -hmm. and you have uh, the collective bargaining of seventeen five and the other labor costs of $10,000, uh, all of which give... Uh, a place where I can turn to for people to do that work, which Wanda was doing. Okay. So if I needed to, okay. depending on my own caseload. Okay. I guess that's really all I have for questions. One thing I just before Tim, just want to piggyback on that. There was sixty thousand dollars moved from your budget last year um, into the assessing budget. Is that something you can access? as well if you need that, providing he doesn't have a need for it. Well, problem. not not without the selectman transferring it. But it could be done. It could be, yes. The 60000 was intended to account for the very high expert costs that you get in defending these um, high-value uh, tax abatement cases that we've been, been experiencing. Do you and oversee that, Mark? Because that used to be part of your budget. Uh, the tax assessor and I together work on those work cases. On that. So yes, okay. yes. So if necessity dictated, you could probably do a little bit more work there if you needed it elsewhere. Um, I not without the selectman's authority. I, but it can be done. Yes. Thank you, Tim. Yes, ma'am. You wanted to go after Mr. Pierce. Yes, I heard his wisdom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is disturbing, I think, is where Jerry may have been coming from as well in his thoughts, is that for a number of years, um, and we've had some robust discussions on the department in, in recent years past, and uh, much of that argument has basically boiled down to the argument, which was successful, that the town saves a lot of money by having two in-house attorneys. And now we're presented with the argument coming from pretty much the same source that we're saving money by having one in-house attorney. Well, and they, those two arguments seem to be at odds with each other. I wonder if you'd speak to that. Yeah. Actually, uh, what we have had doing uh, involved in these types of legal matters is two in-house people. 
one myself, and then the other was Assistant Town Attorney Robertson, Human Resources Coordinator. The end result of this, you will still have two in-house people. It's just the second person will not be an attorney. It will be someone who's been working for the town for 30 years in a command position, namely the former chief who will be the assistant town manager. Uh, the selectman's assessment is that he, fulfilling the role of human resources director, will do what I've been telling you all along can be achieved with in-house people is that in a preventative role, someone involved proactively at the beginning of problems can keep them, if you best as best you can, from going to court and and, and incurring sure. attorney time. And and I'm I, I feel that the well I understood that portion of the argument is the same as was made a couple of years ago. But but it's still two it's in house consistent two in house right. people. Yeah, I got it. That's very consistent. But yeah. you know, a couple of years ago when we were having a robust discussion on this matter, the, the stress was on they needed to be in house attorneys, mm -hmm. not in house staff or something to that effect. It was it had to be an attorney. Yeah, well, attorney. Well, and, and now now when hearing, oh, it doesn't have to be an attorney. And that's that's where the uh, kind of incongruity seems to be uh, in play here. Well, it's it's more the skill. So it doesn't have to it's be. It's the attorney. knowledge base that, that's needed. Um, obviously, if if a matter goes to court, you have to have an attorney doing that. If you're smart, <coughs> people do represent themselves at times. I understand, but. Most effectively, I think uh, the detachment of having an attorney there is best. So, um, again, it's the, it's the knowledge base and the skill. Is it there? The selectman judgment is yes. And, and as I say, what Attorney Robertson did spanned two types of things. So I've looked, I've examined what I have for caseload and believe that between my own budget and the outside counsel budget that remains that that can be covered. Now if, if, if for some reason that ends up not being the case, I'm confident that the selectman will will uh, account for that. By giving you more money for more attorneys? Or for perhaps if it were necessary and made cost effective sense, another in-house part-time if necessary. But right now, it's, this, is, this is what's needed, I think. I think, you know, the, the, this is like a, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I think that, you know, the, my point is not being spoken to directly. You know, the, the previous uh, public debates, which were fairly robust a couple of years ago about whether we should have one or two in-house attorneys, the argument came up in that discussion. It, it was actually at uh, deliberate session, in fact, as I recall, a good portion of that, was whether that second person actually had to be an attorney. And now I'm hearing it doesn't have to be. Jerry is sitting over there saying, no, no, I, I guess he's saying I remember that discussion, and I'm convinced, and was back then, that we needed two in-house attorneys. And he's prepared to make a motion to put a second attorney back in play. So I think that's where this, this is really coming down to a confusion over that argument from just... Yeah, I don't just see that Wanda's role was ever more than six, seven hours a week, 24 hours a month. I don't see that as a big role. <clears throat> and I think he's short as, an attorney. as a as a uh, human relations uh, part time job, if you will. Uh -huh. Both bulk of her effort was as an attorney. Okay, you know, that's to say that out of a forty hour week, uh, thirty four hours were an attorney, or six hours or so were a HR. I see that he's going to be seventeen hours, seventeen hundred hours short uh, next year, and uh, because he, he his outside. Labor costs, if you divide everything by 200 bucks, he's not, that's not a lot of hours he's going to be giving himself for other labor costs or outside council fees. He, you know, it's, uh, hey, Jerry. it's like, like $25,000 is like 12 and a half hours or something like that, or 125 hours, I guess. Jerry, the com uh, Mark says he's comfortable with it. I don't, <laughs> yeah. know, why you're I don't know what else Mark could say. He works for the uh, selectman and the town manager, and he's in the, he's in the pickle. Okay. He's in the middle you, of it. You've well, got an assistant town that being said, manager now that's quite skilled. I think this is the point where I'll ask again. Do we have a motion on the floor? 
The motion wasn't seconded, was it? Wasn't. I will put a motion out there, but I, 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 I gather the consensus is silly because I can see the consensus right here. Mm -hmm. He says he doesn't need it, and the selectmen are saying they don't think he needs it. Uh, but at least I'll go on record saying I think he needs it. I'll make a motion that we uh, restore that position uh, for 60000 a year and another 35000 for fringe benefits. And I will second that. For discussion, and I'd like to discuss it. For discussion, okay. Uh, yes, um, I think Mr. Jones makes a very good point. I wasn't on the budget committee during some of this excitement with the, the ne necessity of having two attorneys, and it was argued uh, quite a bit and quite lengthy, and I can remember there being some very late meetings in which you attended. Uh, <clears throat> as our town attorney, and uh, I can remember you had your uh, partner with you, uh, uh, and you were here quite late. You were last on the agenda a few times. I remember that very clearly, that political maneuvering that was going on at the time. And the thing that struck me the most as a highlight, like Mr. Jones said, is there was a necessity for two people. And like J Mr. Uh, Zanoi said, we all know that Wanda's portion of her time spent on human resources was very small. It was down in the probably 20% range, or maybe even less. So reality says that if she was busy and she was earning her money, which I think she did, there's more than enough for one person to handle. And I think that um, <clears throat> we need to look at this very carefully when we're taking away monies from and a position more or less away from a department and a person who works as hard as you do for the town trying to keep us out of trouble representing the town as often as you do having been there and watch what you do i think that you're going to be short-handed significantly and i signif i really do thoroughly endorse jerry's thoughts on the matter and the motion yeah, madam chair are we I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, are we going to go around the room for discussion again, or is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. If, if I might just say, there are a couple of other pieces that I neglected to mention. A lot, a lot of what Wanda did, and it was very good, she built this skill almost from the beginning, was the review of contracts and also invitations to bid, and uh, built a very nice skill doing that. That takes a lot of time. What the selectmen have done is they've recognized that a lot of that work was being done with Christina, uh, Fred's office. Um, Christina and I have worked for years developing formats for those that are fairly standard. And the selectmen have added five hours to her time, which takes up some of that work. The other thing that I've got built in, which is new to this budget, is a part-time person for 20 hours doing clerical work. And it's, it isn't just filing, it's, it's typing, it's, uh, it's uh, organization of, of the office, and, I, uh, and also as a helper to other departments that I end up doing projects with. So that takes up some of the time that Wanda was doing. Wanda, as you may remember, started as a, as a paralegal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that takes up some of the pressure as well, as having this person in place. Um, and so, uh, at the moment, the, 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 the uh, caseload is such of versus what Wanda was handling and what I'm handling uh, that I think uh, we'll be able to be covered. But if we're not, I'm f always free to go to the selectmen and say we need someone else in-house, if it makes sense. I, th I think I have that flexibility. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. Quickly around the table, if you've already spoken on this, I'm going to pass over you. Um, David. It was just, uh, I'm a little confused because a few months ago we had this discussion, and last year we had this discussion, and this had nothing to do with the selectmen. It had to do with we asked the department head if he felt secure in handling it the way it was. and. He at that time said yes, so I never saw it as a selectman issue. Um, and I thought we had agreed that if the department head was saying he felt comfortable with the way it was, that 
I, I thought the consensus was, why would we argue with someone saying he feels he has enough to handle his own department? So I, I, I'm a little confused as to why we're still discussing the same issue. Mm -hmm. Point. Okay. Right. Uh, now I see why they, sometimes the meetings run a little long. Mm. <laughs> All right. They do. All right. Brian, you have any comments on this? All right. Um, briefly, I'm one of those who has opposed the legal department, as you know, Attorney Gerald, all the way, every time. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up the last time. <coughs> all right. So that's my history with it. Um, I will say that you have done a lot of work. Wanda did a lot of work. But I think a lot of it went into building the format that you have now, managing the chaos that you walked into. And I can see where the workload on some things has decreased. Not that you've decreased, but that the department for the need for two attorneys can be managed with what there is. My concern when we started creating new positions out of old positions was that this is a brief hiatus. And that being said, um, I'm not inclined to go against um, your own professional review of your own workload and increase <coughs> it with another attorney. Um, I will put in that it has nothing to do with any former opinions, only as where we are right now, with a lot of issues having been resolved, a lot of departments having more help in some areas, the advent of having an assistant um, town manager who certainly can handle some issues, maybe not in court, but some other issues. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for adding a second attorney. That's Mike. I'm not either. Stephen? I am not <laughs> doing your job. You're doing your job. Mm -hmm. And just as you are, Fred, if you're reorganizing and you s that's your job. Do your jobs, and I'm good with that. If you tell me you need something, then we try to give it to you. If you tell me you don't want something, I'm not going to force you to have it. <laughs> so that's how I feel. I'm sorry. And next year, it's going to be next year. I don't have a crystal ball. So whatever next year is, is next year. Okay? And we, in the past is the past. We're right here, right now. Okay? So I'm going to leave it up to you gentlemen to make the right decisions. Thank you. Jim? If we were to automatically throw holy water on whatever a department had requested, as some might suggest, then you can see on page 20 three under regular wages account suffix 1100 under the column REQ which means request by the department head you'll see he requested hundred and fifty six thousand two hundred twenty six dollars but the town manager and that's the admin said no 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 you're gonna get hundred three thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars so obviously the process does not have a consensus built in that we automatically throw holy water on whatever the department had requested so some sort of consideration needs to be placed with regard to what's being put for us as well as when the town manager had it put before him and it's just as well as when the board of selectmen had it put before them uh, so with all of that said, <coughs> the confusion remains with me it's not clear to me that we've had the discussions in the past we really need to in-house attorneys and now we really don't a lot of people spent a lot of time looking at this for the last year or two or three when this topic was, has been coming up from time to time. Not just in the Budget Committee, but the deliberate session as well, as well as the Board of Selectmen. And it seems to me that a fog just continues to envelope the entire topic. And since I don't like fogs, I just soon vote to keep it clear and say no. I'm, I'm happy to say no on this motion. But I'm going to recognize that the fog is still out there, whether we really save money with two attorneys or whether we really save money with one attorney. It's still just a fog. 
So, that's it. Okay. Richard? You know, I, I think why we tabled this particular item, uh, because it, it parallels the discussion that we're going to have later on about the, uh, the creation of the assistant uh, town manager and human resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're coupled together and I, again Tim when you look at that column I guess request I, I have to look back and think well when was that item uh, brought forth four days after Wanda died was it prior to it was prior to one's no. deceased wasn't it four days well I'm asking we the, finance the question director. I believe the budgets were due prior in July all right. Correct. Got the print date, which was four days after. Well, anyway, since that happened, uh, again, a lot of a lot has transpired, and now we do see the the creation of the assistant town manager and human resources. And when that first cropped up, I requested a job description of human resources. What did that involve? Uh, and I never really really received that. But I think Mark, you filled me in a little bit here. As you mentioned that uh, she did a lot of review of the, the contracts and so on that did not require actually her expertise as an attorney. Is that correct? Or, or her, uh, well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Now. Well, when, uh, I'll just give you a few examples. I, I think at my understanding. Right, of in other words, what I'm asking, the work that she was doing in, in that broad term of human resources, was that a large part of her function in your office, or a minor part of it? Um, it fluctuated. It fluctuated. Uh, she was on the negotiating team, for instance, when the contracts were being negotiated, so that at that time of year, uh, you would see a higher devotion of her time to, to labor matters mm -hmm. that we counted towards human resources. I see. And then at other times of year, of course, when you didn't have that, the time would be spent more on on uh, what a law practice type of things, what you would normally consider as law practice. Of course, attorneys do our labor negotiators too, so uh, that uh, it, it would fluctuate depending on the demand. But now, with the, the if, if this restructuring uh, goes through, with the deletion of human resources in your office, correct. I understand that you're still, you would be comfortable with be able to carry out your function as the town attorney without any serious problems. Well, because human resources would now be over in the selectman's uh, end of the building. Yes, w with having the flexibility of, of uh, money in the other portions of the budget for outside counsel. And obviously if that gets to the point where it makes sense to to have a part-time person in-house, mm -hmm. um, I'm confident the selectman would give that due consideration because that would save money on the cost of outside. All right, that satisfies me. Yeah. Um, I don't, just a comment, I guess. Of why I understand uh, Mr. Sonoy's motion. I understand his frustration um, having served during that. Um, I, I just I don't think it's part of my responsibility as a member of this committee to build each department head's budget. They're presenting a budget to me. I don't think it's my position to tell them what they should put into their budget. I'm only here to act on what they did. Because um, if that was the case, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I would have added police to the police budget and I think I would have added firemen to the fire budget because I think both of those need help in their departments um, but I, I, I didn't feel that was my position to tell the police chief that I think he should add three men to his department um, or the fire chief to add another unit to his department I probably would have supported it if they did but I think that should come from them and I have a department head, head here telling me that he can live with this budget, that he's presenting this budget, and the manpower is something he can live with. So that I can only, um, I can only in good conscience act on what's in front of me. So that's the way I'll be going on this. Good. No problem. Thank you, Jim. Jim. Yes, um, I would just like to say that you know, people talk about a couple of years ago or something, but times change, circumstances change, positions change. 
And I'd also just like to make a statement that I'd like to put in the notes, please, that there was a statement made that the attorney was unable to speak freely because of he works for the selectmen and the town manager. I would like to put in the notes that I take offense. Wait, hold on just a minute. That he was unable to speak? That he was not able to speak freely to answer questions freely because he worked for the selectmen and he worked for the town manager. I would like it in the notes that I take offense to that. I take offense personally and I take offense for the Board of Selectmen. And I think that I need it, that, it, that the Board of Selectmen are owed an apology and I am owed an apology. Thank you. It's very suspicious to me that one position is submerged and another position grows. Don't know where. Jerry, we're still in turn. And I think we've had okay. enough discussion on this. We've gone around the table. All right. Can I make one comment? No. I'm right. sorry. We've gone around the table, and I'm That's confusing it, everybody's comments at this point in time. Right. In fairness, I gave everybody a chance. It's almost 10 o'clock, and we're not <coughs> even anywhere near done. Um, the motion is out there. It has been seconded. Uh, An amendment. Was there amendment, I'm sorry. The yeah, amendment I made the motion, out. and I think Mike seconded it. Right. All right, Jerry. Repeat the motion, Jerry, please. Repeat. I would, uh, I would make a motion to replace uh, his lost attorney. I would put sixty thousand dollars in his regular wages and thirty-five thousand in his fringes for two thousand and fifteen. Right now, I see he's going to be seventeen to eighteen hundred hours short of his manpower because he's only got one hundred and seventy-five hours baked in there for um, for outside labor and for uh, whatever else they call it. Uh, 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 outside outside council. Council. Okay. She's got 175 hours built in here, 200 bucks an hour. Wanda was doing 1,900 hours a week, uh, a year. Okay. So that's kind of where I am. All those in favor? I support that. All right. All those opposed? I see you there, Stanton. Counting. It's kind of the yeses because they're smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and abstentions? I'm a no, None. If you're confused. You just put the ring around. I did. All right. Oh, so <laughs> the amendment <laughs> fails. Back to the motion on the total. On legal. I'm going to move the number again. Yes, please. Yes, please. 186. $186,364. Second. <clears throat> Oh, it's already so been seconded. Oh. All those in favor? Those opposed? Opposed. Okay. And no abstentions. Yes. Pierce, Inouye, Jones. Okay, so that carries. Moving on to the last issue, and that is the town manager's review. Now, yeah, again, this was one that was tabled before the discussion as we we started here. We're ending here. Those stats are on page one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to page three. Are we on a particular page? Page three. Yeah, yeah. page three. Page three, uh, I move 252,983. Dollars. Second. Okay. Final discussion on this section here. I am going to go around the table once. And um, we've had discussion on this. Some people felt they still had it as an open issue. Um, no crossfire, please, as we go around one time the finality for this issue. And Jim, would you like to lead off on this side this time? Uh, I support this budget. Okay. I think it's a good move. Clear enough. And everybody will get a turn. Glenn? Um, I only have one question, and I can't find it right away. But it Would was you like us to come back to you? No, I know what it is, but I'm just not sure the dollar for you for it. Um, I just believe that the reporting contract or a person or whoever is recording the slot in those meetings have gone, the time has gone way down. Mr. Bean's running a tight ship. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be reduced. 
there's all a map for whether it's a it's a contract. I can't say anything about it. But. I will tell you that the time being spent right now is an anomaly. Usually, okay. um, far more time is spent. So I would caution but it, you. Because the meetings have gone to less than an hour over the past eight months, I, I believe the person is being paid a couple hundred dollars an hour to report now. I just think that's no, that's a, that's a, you're asking a question or making a motion or what? Uh, I'll make it a motion. What is the motion? If I can, to reduce the amount of whatever it is. Um, Not quite good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why don't we get back to you while you Thank you. Yeah. I'll try to find we'll do it. As we do as we did with Jerry. We'll come back to you Thank at you. the end, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing right now. Richard. Not at the moment, no. Tim. I am in a fog. That's not yeah. all, Jim. Yeah, I'm sure you can help me. Ah, oh, there it is. I, not a weatherman, but I'll give it a good try. <laughs> weathermen never clear up fogs. They yeah, I understand. Them. They do <laughs> create them sometimes. You know, when the uh, new concept of an assistant town manager was put forth initially, uh, it, publicly, that is, because it was done non-public for some period of time and uh, those minutes are sealed as you know I believe it was the board of selectmen it might have been chairman Beam, but I'm not certain on that and reported a saving somewhere on the order of twenty thousand dollars and the number has been banted around ten thousand etc I've heard all kinds of numbers uh, Christy uh, produced a set of numbers for us a couple months ago showed uh, net savings after factoring in health insurance costs and social security and Medicare and all kinds of other good stuff at uh, a savings of $6,751. And that was based on a budgeted salary for the former uh, second time term, which included a 17% raise. Uh, this committee asked uh, Christy to run the numbers without that raise. So you know, it was her pay as it was. When she passed. Right, before she got her raise after she died, mm -hmm. so to speak. And that, of course, produced a totally different set of numbers, which shows a net cost, this again, Christy's numbers, of $3,623. And I was hoping you could speak to that in a way that would uh, get us all to understand. It's a cost in order to hire the individual to select and decide upon. Um, let me correct a couple of statements that were made here earlier. Okay, just so we're all on the same basis. The town Council does not work or report to me. We work right. to report strictly to the Board of Selectmen, just so we all understand where that is. Um, his assistant, former assistant, who unfortunately very untimely passed, and, uh, I think caused uh, uh, quite a quite a loss in in, in uh, productivity in the in the department simply because of that. Um, she reported to me for personnel services, for human human resource pur uh, purposes, and for contractual purposes, and uh, I took a significant amount of her time. There's just no question about it. I did. And that's just the way it was. Um, she had engaged in, in straightening, straightening out our uh, CDL licensing requirements with the federal government, uh, along with uh, Christina. They both worked on that diligently. Uh, they both worked on the contracts in the office diligently, spent significant time doing that. Um, they both worked on uh, health insurance. They both worked on uh, the benefit packages that we pay employees. No employee could be put on the payroll by order of the Board of Selectmen um, before the current board was in panel. This was the prior board without going through uh, Mr. Robinson, uh, who had to check every single item um, from the D forms for the federal government right down to the Social Security and personal identification and, and resumes and everything else had to be all checked individually. All the requirements in the town personnel policy had to be checked off and, and signed for. Uh, that takes a considerable amount of time. I was doing that before she did it. And basically, my time was building up to 70 and 80 hours a week in order to get my job done. 
um, she took that over and uh, we worked closely together on it. So there was a, a lot of time that she put into doing that in addition to working on legal cases. And there were some weeks I think probably Mark was a little frustrated because she spent more time working for me than she did for him. And he wanted to work more time for him than she, for me. Uh, but it's a fact of the matter is that 99% of all of our problems uh, deal with people. And employees are no different. Uh, if you pay attention to those individual problems, you solve them. And things run along smoothly. Um, you're probably all aware, and I think it's been no secret, that uh, we've had a lot of grievances over the last few years and, and wanted to help stabilize that fact. Um, she brought that down to base, base, base ground and, and treated people very well, and we, we solved a lot of problems. That has to continue. She also worked on um, contracts for the unions, and she was a big part of the negotiations for those contracts, working with outside counsel and with, with, with Mark, uh, as well as with the Board of Selectmen and with the individual labor unions. Uh, that's continuing with the new human resource manager. In short, I can't keep on working 70, 80 hours every week. It just isn't happening. Um, you have to have some time to breathe. Uh, Wanda was helping significantly with that. Uh, with her passing, the little dip that came in there went right back up to where I was before. So every week, every night, I take home a briefcase, and every night I take home a pile of work. It's the only way you can get it done. Um, that's a lousy way to run a $50 million a year corporation. The selectmen considered that. They looked at the facts. They looked at the, the workloads. Um, they worked, looked at, at how that should be resolved. Um, the actual resolution of this happened while I was away on vacation. Uh, but they had consulted me before I left. We had talked about this. And uh, I approved their proposal. I see no reason not to approve the proposal. We have a lot of things going on in this town, and you can't manage them all at once at the same time. It just isn't possible. Uh, most large corporations have at least two people handling those uh, on a top level. I don't handle all the departments in the town because some of them report to the selectmen individually, some of them report to other boards and committees. Having a, a uh, assistant town manager um, that helps on those functions frees me up to do what I'm supposed to be doing as a town manager, which is managing all the individual departments in the town fire, police, public works, you name it. They, all those departments in Chapter 37 report to me. The only ones that don't are the legal department, the assessing department, and the planning board, and the town clerk. Everybody else in some fashion reports to me, including the collector of taxes, which I'm partially responsible for under the statute, just partially. That's an ongoing, everyday job. For instance, I came in this morning and uh, the first thing I do is open the computer up and I go in and look at the wastewater treatment plant works for yesterday. And um, you're not concerned with those. All you're concerned is that they run. We have a wastewater treatment plant that treats 4 million gallons a day at the most. We almost had 6 million gallons go through yesterday. That's a problem. We have to watch that problem and solve it. I have to watch it every single day. And I have to talk to the department heads and the individuals involved when things go wrong, and we have to fix them. I need time to do that, and I'm not getting the time to do that. The selectmen recognize that. So one of the proposals was to create the position of assistant town manager. Um, it happened to be that, that our former chief of police was retiring. Uh, he was a suggested individual, and uh, he's got 30 years of service in this town. He probably knows, I think, just about everybody in the town and has dealt with just about every circumstance the town has dealt with personnel-wise and, and factually as far as administration is concerned. He served numerous times as a town manager, um, acting and otherwise. Uh, Mark, Mark served for a, for a year and a half, and, and he doesn't want to back either. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that right up front. Um, the selectmen made a conscious decision that we needed to, to meld those two positions together and we needed to draw down some of our existing problems in the town and get some of the management done 
that's overwhelmed us. Um, we went for a number of years as a good example um, on Exeter Road. And for a number of years, I proposed to the Board of Selectmen that we do something. And for a number of years, it never made the warrant. It never made the budget because there were other <coughs> priorities the selectmen had in mind, which is great. That's okay. That's not a problem. Uh, it's to the point now where we have to do it. The same with the Church Street pump station. Um, the board overpassed, passed over that for a number of years, and towards the end, when Keith came on, uh, we went to the board again, and we talked to them, and we said, you're either going to fix it or it's going to fail, in which case you shut the beach down. Those types of things shouldn't happen in this town. I've worked in seven communities in my career. One of them, the most prestigious town, one of the most prestigious towns in the United States where I was, my, my, my hometown. This town is head and shoulders above all seven. Every one of them. You do things right because you try to stay on track. We lost the track. We need to get back on it. We need to be doing things that need to be done. And to do that, we need manpower. The board has seen that problem. And in their decision, their wisdom, we needed an assistant for me, and we needed to increase staff time, and we needed to make sure that our human services, where all of our employees are, are taken care of properly. <clears throat> it wasn't happening as well as it should have. It is now. We're working hard at that. So. What I can say is that, yes, we need the position because we need the work. And we need to protect the investment that the 14,000 residents of this town have put in the system. Otherwise, we're going to have significant problems. I'm sure you would agree that we need more than just manpower and we need good management, but rather we need an informed public because they're the ones that are going to be authorizing or not authorizing the money to various uh, purposes that are essential to this town. And so them having a clear understanding of numbers, the facts are, is very important, vital, one might even say. Would you not agree with that? And what we've been told is that this, uh, um, well, I'll use the word reorganization. I think that's the most neutral term to use. I, there's no dispute from this, from certainly not from this person, that the RSAs grant you the authority to reorganize given that the Board of Selectmen blessed that reorganization. That's clearly black letter law in the RSAs relative to a town manager. And you're absolutely correct. Everybody in the town virtually works for you. There's no disputing that at all. So you, know, you have the authority to reorganize and all that sort of stuff. And it's the voters, the legislature, the town meeting that has the authority, the only one's authority to appropriate money in the final analysis. Again, black letter law. And we're told by the Board of Selectmen most famously, most pot, most frequently, and others on a more personal level, that this reorganization is showing a net savings to the budget, to the town. But the numbers that we've got now show a net cost of $3,623. And that was the nature of my question. Uh, are, are, are these numbers wrong, the most recent numbers that we got that indicate a net cost of $3,623, the ones that Christie produced after removing the raise that Wanda never got? The figures speak for themselves, and, and, I, and I trust uh, Christie to give you the right figures. So it is a net cost, then, quite apparently. Now, we've also um, created a, a contract uh, with the uh, new assistant town manager. And I'm sure that you're aware that that is an expense and that's, that doesn't involve legal implications that we were referring to earlier, which is RSA 32-8. I'm sure you're well aware of RSA 32-8 says that uh, no board of selectmen or anybody for that matter can create a, a, uh, an expenditure or commitment for an expenditure in excess of the amount appropriated by that legislative body. 
And so the creation of these contracts impose a expense in future years, which there is no appropriation in those future years, not until the town meeting actually acts. So by creating that contract, you're effectively, or whoever's doing it, is effectively imposing upon uh, RSA 32A in a way that it would seem to be at odds. Now, this comes down to a question of where is the legislative authority, which I often questioned last year, and as you know, got very <coughs> little answers on the matter. So I continued to do my research and discovered under the famous New Hampshire Municipal Association website a rather interesting legal brief on the question. But I won't read the whole brief, Madam Chair. I'll simply read the last paragraph, and I'll do it verbatim. It says, since approval of multi-years contracts is, in a sense, raising and appropriating funds under Childs and Bedford Chapter, that's a case law it's citing, it seems that the Board of Selectmen and other officials and employees are not, in the absence of expressed statute, empowered to enter multi-year agreements for expenditures without town meeting approval. It goes on and says, it stands to reason that only the legislative body, which makes appropriations, can promise to make future appropriations. So that's the New Hampshire Municipal Association's conclusion on that. So I am concerned that this action is actually imposing, as it is reflected in the default budget, with given raises put them in the default budget and the current budget. No choice for the voter. Right. We've got a contract, you know, and it's three-year contract. No choice for the voter this year. Choice for the voter next year. No choice for the voter the year after. And no choice for the voter the year after that. So I am concerned about the uh, process, as I'm sure you are concerned about the health of the town. I think the legislative process and the integrity of the vote and the voter having a valid choice is vital to good town government. I'm sure you would be happy to clarify my concerns and make me more comfortable on these matters. Thank you, Tim. Turn it over to town manager now for an answer. I'm and sorry. We'll turn it over to. That was to the manager, ma'am. That was to the yes, manager. Well, I, I said we'll turn it over to Fred. Okay. Um, and first of all, the appropriation mentioned in the case is the bottom line of the town budget because that's all the town is authorized to appropriate. They right. do not appropriate lines. They do not appropriate sublines because sublines do not exist legally within anything. They're just here for your information. Okay? Um, if, in fact, it is illegal for the Board of Selectmen to sign a contract, then I'm here illegally. Then almost all the employees of the town who are not in the union are here illegally, and that's not the case. As long as the selectmen do not exceed the bottom line of the budget by law, and this is a default budget, they may take and reorganize the entire default budget. And they may hire 15 town managers if they would like to. <laughs> That's the law in this state, and the Supreme Court has said so in well, a case dealing with the town, town manager. Hand. Okay? Mm. Uh, a, a manager, whether it's a town manager, a deputy town manager, an assistant town manager, is entitled to a contract under RSA 37. And the selectmen are the ones who have the option to exercise that statute because they are the only ones. I can't hire an assistant town manager or a deputy. Only they can. Because the stat statute under which that deputy or assistant operates is exclusively at the control of the Board of Selectmen and not me. I only have the control of the individual departments once appointed. And I have a three-year contract and the town hasn't voted on that. But yet the Supreme Court has upheld that procedure and upheld the procedure of the selectmen to spend the funds any way they wish in a default budget and they're not exceeding the bottom line of the default budget. In fact, I, I would be surprised if they're exceeding the bottom line of their own budget because there are still 
sizable portions of money is not expended in their budgets. So I don't see where they have committed a crime. I don't see where they have misappropriated no, funds. That. Well, when you say they've misappropriated funds, that constitutes a crime in New Hampshire. You didn't say misappropriated, and I didn't say crime. Well, so let's not put words in each other's mouth, okay? okay. When, when we talk about they can't do something, okay, and they do, and statutory law allows them to do it, then they're allowed to do it. Phrase it that way. They acted within the scope and authority of their individual offices. If you don't feel that way, then, then you know, maybe the court needs to reinterpret what power the selectmen have, and they'll have to go back to uh, is it Sullivan versus Hampton. Hampton. Yeah. Where the Supreme Court decided what power the selectmen have in a default budget, which we're under. They can hire any employee they wish in any position they wish, or they can order me to hire any employee in any position they wish at any salary. And as long as the, law, the order is lawful, I have to carry it out. In this case, they hired someone which they had the power to hire at a salary which they designated, and the statute provides for them to do that. So I don't see where there's a problem. Now, it may be that some people don't like the idea that they created a new position, but they also abolished an old position. The um, point of dispute is one with the uh, interpretation as provided by the New Hampshire Municipal Association regarding multiple multi-year contracts. And it's not really a dispute. I understand. It's more you a matter of a collision of of what seems to be happening versus their opinion on <coughs> all the contracts gener generally, which does raise a rather interesting question in my mind that you might want to clarify. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, when we have a, a union contract, for example, mm -hmm. which is really, it's like an employee contract for a collective group of employees. Right. That has to go to a Tom Warren article. Yeah. Somehow, when we have a individual contract, that doesn't go to the Tom Warren article. So why would, why do the unions have to go through this exercise and individuals don't? Because the Supreme Court said so, and, ah. and, and, and you understand that once the union contract is ratified by the town, there is a provision in RSA 273A, which is the collective bargaining law, the, the labor law for, for municipal employees. The selectmen may amend the entire thing through sidebars. And they don't have to go back to town meeting to do that. And they can change the salaries and amounts in there, too as long as there's appropriation within those individual departments to do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not so much, you're relying upon an interpretation of the Municipal Association. I'm relying upon an interpretation of the, of the State Supreme Court. And so is a board of selectmen. And, and uh, one kind of outweighs the other by just a, a few hundred tons. It's, it's a pretty we'll, big... Well, let's understand each other. I'm not relying on anyone because I'm just trying to get the truth out in my own head so I don't have a fog. All right. And, and to that extent, trying to get the truth out to the rest of the public. All right. I I'm only like quoting on what you quoted. Okay. Fog, I understand. I think, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I pointed out just exactly where that source was. Are we talking about right. the position of the Excuse me. Town I think at this point you've had ample time to <coughs> ask your question. I believe the town manager has given you clearly the final answer. There are others here, and I would like to move on. Well, I just wanted to uh, to remove any any uh, question about the nature of my confusion. It's not. Whether I, it doesn't matter whether I like the position of assistant town manager. It doesn't matter. That's your call, as far as I can see, in the law. All right? And I have to trust that you are in the position to do the job of the town manager is defined by law, and you're doing the job well. And if you're not, well, that's for the Board of Selectmen, not for me or the Budget Committee to deal with. That's not what the nature of my question is about. My question, as I said before, is, you know, I'm interested in the process. The product will will come out good if the process is good. So I'm interested in the integrity of the process. And to, to do that, I have to understand it. And in, in some of these nuances, the process is not clear as to what it should be. OK, thank you. Stephen. My turn. 
Thank you. Take a drink. I'm going to take a drink. drink. (laughs) Be brief. You know, it's interesting, Fred. You were away getting your operation, so you weren't around to explain a lot of things. Okay, and then stuff happened, and I have to say myself, I was like, I was quite surprised at that selectman's meeting when they suddenly the police chief, uh, you know, he retires, and then he's, uh, you know, then this position comes out. And thank you very, very much for your explanation tonight, because I don't, I'm not in a fog at all. It's, it seems to be very clear to me now. Um, you weren't around to explain it before, but you just explained it very thoroughly. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm all set. The only question I had was from um, Christie's numbers. Um, still showing a um, twenty thousand dollar encumbrance from two thousand thirteen, and it hasn't been spent yet. Yes, it has. For supplies and expenses. That's what I'm asking. It's, it's been expended. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's it. The assignment approved by the selectmen and town meeting had, in fact, been carried out. Okay. Jerry, I have trouble with the. Uh, regular salary line and uh, it's a town of 15,000 people two town managers a couple hundred thousand dollars because I can't I can't endorse this budget Michael. Uh, yes I uh, have some concerns that mr. Jones brought up <clears throat> I like to think that the uh, budget and the default budget and all those entities are really left up to the legislative body and what's occurring here is we're hiring and paying somebody at the very end of the year (coughs) basically to avoid that legislative body the privilege of voting on it. So to me it's an in run around the legislative body and the process because where the vote is up or down on the budget, the voters are going to be stuck with this. They don't have any choice on it. I'm very much against this budget for the reasons that Mr. Jones brought out, and uh, I can see no need in my own mind for this process to work the way it did, because it seemed like to me it was not very open to the public, in my opinion, and taking away the voters' privilege to vote, privilege in this country, apparently. I thought it was a right, but in this town it looks like it's a privilege because we don't get to vote on very much of this stuff, apparently. Again, that's my opinion before somebody gets rambunctious. I think that we owe it to the voters to be as open as we possibly can be and the way this was handled, the way it appears to be going through the process, it just violates the principles of... But your problem is with the selectman, not with the town manager. Say again? What was your question? He said the, the problem, he says, is with the selectman. Excuse no, me. I'm not getting I, into whether it's selectman or that uh, because what one, does of, the, have to do with the one of the members the already got into that. Excuse me. Uh, I'm have gone around about the table with the opportunity for everybody to speak. Uh, yeah. Mr. Pierce has the floor right now. Thank you. Thank as you, Madam Chairman. As long as you're being respectful, please continue, but I, please I, do try to wrap this up. Okay, I will. Um, I'm just saying that this is an in run around the voters. And I'll end it right there. Thank you. Sonny. Yeah, I can be very brief. Last year I happened to pick up the town report of Exeter, a town about the same size as Hampton. Okay? They don't have a full time council. Their legal cost was sixty thousand dollars last year. Now we'll have an assistant town manager and a town manager. Department heads can go to either of them and ha- help get advice on decisions. You know, mm-hmm. I think it makes a lot of sense what, what we're doing at this point. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. I, uh, I have a pet peeve about having people do work or not utilizing their skills because they're tied down with other stuff. So when you talked about the human rela- relations and how much time that takes, I've been there, I know that. Mm. I, I totally agree. I am in support of what 
you've done. As Steve mentioned very eloquently, I totally agree with exactly what he said, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but the only negative thing was you, you did a great job here tonight explaining the logic and the rationale behind it, and I'm totally in favor of that. We should have just communicated it better, and I know you had some issues where you weren't around to do that. Sure. Um, but I do agree with the gentleman talking about the transparency of, of communicating, just as you did to us tonight, with the voter, I think would have been um, more transparent. But I, I will be in favor of this. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. If you would run the number again, Jim. $252,000. $982,983. Excuse me, I'm looking at 242, 283. Page three? Page three? I'm sorry. It's 252,983. Oh, I'm sorry. Gotcha. All those in Opposed? All right, I am going to do the hour of the evening. I'm going to put the minutes on to next week's meeting where do we have the schools. Um, there is no old business, new business. The following week, we're on for warrant articles, Madam Chair. No, no we're not for warrant Not next week, but the... We're January. After next week, we January come 6th. back till January 6th. So. Well, that's the following week to me for you. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I have a motion, motion to, to adjourn? adjourn? Second. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Right. Adjourn at 1029. Thank you. Thank you.